okay, all praise to the most high. So tonight's topic is called the unweavable black queen. Unweavable black queen. That's tonight's topic. Unweavable black queen. Okay, unweavable black queen. So we need to understand what is the definition of the word queen, not Q-U-E-E-N. No, Q-U-E-A-N. That's the definition we're gonna go to. All right. Let's get the definition of the word queen. Queen. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, read it when you have it. The definition of queen. A disreputable woman. A disreputable woman. A disreputable woman. That's the queen. Specifically, read the next part of that. Specifically, prostitutes. You see that thing? Prostitutes. So when you hear the black woman say, I'm a queen, I'm a bad B, I'm a bad queen, she's not talking about Q U E E N, she's talking about Q U E A N. Read that definition again. The definition of the word queen. Mm -hmm. A disreputable woman. Specifically, prostitutes. Specifically, prostitutes. Let's get some synonyms for queen. Read the synonyms. Synonyms. Chippy. Chippy. Mm -hmm. Doxy. Mm. Fancy woman. Fancy woman. That's a working girl. Read on. Oh, floozy. Floozy. A floozy. Okay. My cocaine. That's a queen. Go ahead. Hoochie. Hoochie. A hoodre. Go ahead. Hussy. Hussy. I like the next part of that. I like the next word. Read the next word. Jezebel. What did you say? Jezebel. 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 Read that part again. Jezebel. Jezebel. Go ahead. Minx. A minx. You ever seen a minx cat? The one that doesn't have no feathers on it? That cat is disgusting. You ever seen that thing? Go ahead. Tramp. A tramp. Go ahead. Trollop. Trollop. I've never used that word. Never seen it before in my life. Next part of that word. Next word. Winch. Winch. A hole. Okay. Now, the definition again. Queen, a disreputable. The definition of queen. Mm -hmm. A disreputable woman. Specifically, prostitute. Read that again. The definition of queen. A disreputable woman. Specifically, prostitute. So the word disrepute means disgrace or shame. The word disrepute means disgrace or shame, dishonor, okay? Stigma, scandal, okay? And ill repute, meaning an ill reputation. That's a queen. Guess what? That is the, that, that's the stigma that is surrounding the black woman today. Whenever the black woman's name comes up, you don't think of anything positive, you understand? It's always anything, everything, and everything negative when the, the name of the black woman comes up. You understand? But you can't tell them nothing. You understand? You cannot tell them nothing. Watch this. Um, give me the book of Ecclesiastes, okay? Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 25. No, Sirach 26. Okay, Sirach 26. I've not started the class yet. Sirach 26 and verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 26. You know what? Start verse 25. Read verse 25. Let's start there. We're going to read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, chapter 26, verse 25. Come on. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. A shameless woman. So the subject matter is about a shameless woman. The queen is a shameless woman. You understand? This queen, your, your, your kind bow, those are queens. Okay, those are queens. Your Megan Estalion, your Cardi B, those are queens. 
Okay, read that again. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 25. Mm -hmm. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Because of the things that they do, they be flaunting their behind, the things they speak, they're disrespectful. You know, they, you can't tell them nothing, you can't correct them. Yes, that's a shameless woman right there. Read. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. Go ahead. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Because when you look at what's happening in the media, none of these women honor their husband. They speak ill of the black man. You understand? They speak ill of the black man and they are giving these young sisters a poor example. Okay, come on. But she that is dis but she that dishonoreth him in her pride mm -hmm. shall be counted ungodly of all. So what is the key factor here? Pride. Pride is the key because you can't tell them nothing. You understand? You cannot tell them nothing. That's why they tell you, I'm a queen. You understand? We're equal or I'm equal to you on a body. That's why they are bossy, they they, they they are disrespectful. You understand? They don't listen, they speak over you, they interrupt. Okay, that's a queen. You see what I'm saying? That is the queen right there. Okay, next verse. Go ahead. Verse 27. A loud crying woman mm -hmm. and a scold shall be sought out to drive away the enemies. You see that thing? That's her job, to drive away the enemies. You understand? Let's say you have a debt. You understand? And these debt collectors be calling you. When they call them, she had the phone. And then she will drive them away. Okay, read verse 27 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 27. Come on. A loud crying woman mm -hmm. shall, and a scold shall be sought out to drive away the enemies. You read? There be two things that grieve okay. my heart. Okay, that's it on that. Go, go, go to Proverbs now. Give me Proverbs 9. Mm. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse, let me see. Give me Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 13. Read that. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 13. Come on. A foolish woman is clamorous. Mm -hmm. She is simple and knoweth nothing. He says, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. That's a queen. Because in order for her to not to be simple, what needs to happen? Give me Psalms 19 verse 7. This is what needs to happen to the queen, this unweavable black queen, for them not to be simple. This is what needs to happen. We watch God. Psalm 19, verse 7. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. Come on. The law of the Lord is perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. Mm -hmm. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You see what's going to make wise the simple? The laws of God. God's commandment is what's going to turn an unweavable black queen into a wife. You see that thing? Into a mother. Into a righteous sister of the Most High. You understand? Go back to where was it? Proverbs chapter 9 verse 13. We watch God. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 13. Come on. A foolish woman is clamorous. Mm -hmm. She is simple and knoweth nothing. She is simple meaning she's dumb. She don't know nothing. But she, because of the loud big mouth, she's going to make it seem that she knows something. You ever notice these black women that don't want to listen to nothing? They don't want to listen to nobody. They don't want to be corrected. They are loud. They are stubborn. They don't want to get nothing. The reason why they are so loud is because they are hiding the fact that they don't know nothing. And be, them being loud in the world is because as she's a strong, independent black woman. No, no, no. She's clever and she's simple. That's what the Bible calls it. You understand? Read again. Let's say Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. Mm -hmm. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. She is simple and she knoweth nothing. Watch this. Mm. Let's get the definition of the word clamorous because it's not a regular Negro way. Clamorous. Okay, let me let me share my screen real quick. All right. Okay, read the definition. The definition of clamorous. Mm -hmm. 
Adjective. Making a loud and confused noise. Making a loud and confused noise. Guess what? The, 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 the queen don't want to hear nothing. They will make a loud and a confused noise. So much so that they end up confusing you. You see that thing? Because just so that they can confuse you. All this, give me first Corinthians. We're going to come back to the, to the synonyms, the, the similar words related to Clement. Give me first Corinthians, okay, chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Watch this. Because the Apostle Paul, he explained this thing. Okay, first Corinthians 14, verse 33. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Come on. For God is not the author of confusion, mm -hmm. but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. You see that thing? It says the, the most that God is not the author of confusion. The most I did not author confusion. What did he author? Jump down to verse 14 now. Let's see what the Lord author. What the most is about. Read what you got. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Mm -hmm. Let all things be done decently and in order. You see that thing right there? Decency and order will destroy confusion. You understand? Will destroy a loud and confused noise. The decency and order will destroy a clever woman. You understand? We'll shut it down. Watch this. Jump back up. Read verse 34 now. Okay? Read. Verse 34. Mm -hmm. Let your women keep silence in the churches. You see what it says after that? After verse 33? It says, let your women keep silence in the churches. Because they are the main ones that bring confusion. You see that thing? A confused and a loud noise. Read. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Read. But they are commanded to be under obedience, mm -hmm. as also saith the law. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. What law are you talking about? You see, the subject matter is about what? Being silent and being obedient. Watch this. Genesis 3.16. Give me that thing. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Let's see the law that the Apostle Paul is referring to. Okay. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. Unto the woman he said, mm -hmm. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Really? In sorrow shalt thou, thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, mm -hmm. and he shall rule over thee. You see that thing? It says, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he, your husband, shall rule over you. Meaning what? Your husband is your head. You see what I'm saying? So now, the reason why he's saying there must be obedience and also say it unto the law is because of this law that is making reference to you. Meaning she must be ruled over by a righteous man who keep God's commandment. You understand? So that there's no confusion in the church and in the household because that's where the church begins. In your house. You see that thing? Now watch this. Give me Ecclesiastes 26 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 13. Let's start with the, the 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 13. Read. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband, mm -hmm. and her discretion will fatten his bones. You see that thing? Her discretion will fatten his bones. Meaning what? This woman, she knows how to deal with her husband. She's silent, she's loving, she's kind. You understand? She's not a bulldog. You see what I'm saying? She's not a bulldog. Read it again, verse 13. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 13. Mm -hmm. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. You see that her discretion will fatten his bones because guess what? The way she conducts herself, her mind is well instructed by her husband. So much so that her discretion, meaning her discretion goes into how she reverences her husband, will fatten his bones. But the demon, this is what the demon will do. All this, give me the book of Proverbs, okay? Proverbs chapter 17. Give me Proverbs 17 verse 22. This is what a demon will do. The unwivable black queen, the clamorous woman, this is what she'll do to her husband. Watch this. Proverbs 17, verse 22. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Go ahead. 
a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, mm -hmm. but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. But a broken spirit dryeth the bones. Why is the spirit broken? Why? Because remember, we come into this spirit broken as a people. As we come in, the Bible is there to do what? To repair the broken heart that we were reading in Isaiah 61. To, to bind up the broken heart. What's going to bind up the broken heart? The laws of God will do that thing. The spirit of Christ is there to do that. But because he doesn't want to listen, because he's too loud, guess what? She's not going to repair a broken spirit. Because what? She's busy talking, running her mouth, being disrespectful. When, when, when does she get the time to repair her spirit? When does she get time to repair her broken spirit? She's not going to have time to do that. You see that thing? Now go back to Sarah now. Give you Article 26, verse 13 again. Okay. You know what? Hmm. Give me Sarah 28. Sarah 28, verse, verse 17. Sarah 28, verse 17. Ecclesiastes 28, verse 17. Read. The stroke of the whip mm -hmm. maketh marks in the flesh, mm -hmm. but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. You see that thing? But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. You see what it says? Because the mouth is not checked. So this is a clamorous woman that makes a loud and a confused noise to confuse everybody because the spirit is broken. That's a queen. You see that thing? That's what the Lord is saying, right? Meaning what? She's going to destroy what the husband is doing. Whatever the Lord is doing, she's going to come behind him, behind him and be the demon and be just destroying everything. Because why? Because her job is what? It says, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bone. Watch this. She will abate the man. She will abate the man's courage. You see what I'm saying? Now watch this. Give me Sarah 25, verse 23. Sarah 25, verse 23. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 25, verse 23. Read. A wicked woman abated the courage. You see that thing? A wicked woman, that's the clamorous woman, who's simple, who's loud, she don't know nothing, but she's going to what? She's going to use her mouth to cause confusion everywhere she is. Read again, verse 23. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 23. Read. A wicked woman abated mm -hmm. the courage. Meaning she will destroy the man's courage to build the nation. You understand? Read. Make it a heavy countenance and a wounded heart. You see that thing? It says she makes a, she make a man's countenance to be heavy. And he, you, you understand? And wounded the heart. Meaning what? Remember what it says, it says, but the stroke of the tongue breaks the bone. You see that thing? So now the man courage to build is being let down by this demon that she's carrying around. Okay, read. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress mm -hmm. make it weak hands and feeble knees. You see that thing? Meaning she will not comfort her husband because she's not a pillar of rest. She's a pillar of strength. That's the key. Because she's abating the man's courage to build. Because what is the man's job? The man's job is to build. The blue, we have the blueprint. Okay, the Lord gave us the blueprint to build the nation of Israel. So as we are building, she will come behind you and what? And destroy what you're building to what? To abate your courage. To discourage you. So she's not a comfort. She's a pillar of strength. You see that thing? Now, Sarah 26, verse 13 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 13. Go ahead. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband, mm -hmm. and her discretion will fatten his bones. Her discretion will fatten this man's bones. Go ahead. A silent and loving woman mm -hmm. is a gift of the Lord. Stop right there. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Because the problem is a clamorous woman, she don't know how to be silent. Therefore, she don't know how to be loving to her husband. So she, how can she fatten his bone? Impossible. She will not be able to fatten this man's bone because she's not silent and she's not loving. Therefore, she's a gift of Satan. She's not a gift. She's a curse. You understand? How can a gift be loud and, and hateful? That's not a gift. That's not a gift. That's a curse. Okay? Read again verse 14. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 14. Read. A silent and loving woman is mm -hmm. a gift of the Lord. Read. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. You see that thing? Meaning this mind right here is 
This mind right here is priceless when it's well instructed. Because when she is instructed, guess what she's doing? She's not keeping quiet, listening because she wants to learn. No, she's keeping quiet, listening because she wants to what? She wants to argue. She wants to disagree. You see that thing? So just because the sister is quiet, it doesn't mean she, she, she's lying. No, she can be quiet, but she's wicked as hell. You see that thing? So silence doesn't mean always, doesn't necessarily mean, no, she's lying, she's a fine decision. No, no. She's just a what? She's just a demon waiting for you to finish. Then her demon is going to come out. That's what we're reading here. But this sister right here that we're reading about, this one, this is a virtuous woman right here. You understand? She's not that unweavable black queen. I'm going to deal with the we part because I'm using the word we unweavable for a reason. Okay? We, because the head is sick. Okay? Read verse 14 again. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 14. Wait. A silent and loving woman is mm -hmm. a gift of the Lord. Wait. Mm -hmm. And there is no and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. You see that thing? You cannot put a price on that mind that is well instructed. Why? Because a mind being well instructed is for your benefit as the man. As your baby, she's gonna come behind you and comfort you and support you, not destroy as your baby. Proverbs 14, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Come on. Every wise woman buildeth her house, mm -hmm. but the foolish pluck it down with her hands. But the foolish woman will pluck it down with her hands. That's how she abates the courage. That's when she, dis she discourages her Lord from building. You see that thing? Because guess what? She, her spirit is broken. Why? Because she doesn't want to sit down and apply what is written. So guess what? Instead of sitting down and applying what is written, guess what the sister will do? The sister will what? Will create a loud and a confused noise. Just so that we don't have to deal with the real issue. You understand? Meaning what? She's full of excuses. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 28. Proverbs chapter 28. Okay. Verse 9. Proverbs 28 verse 9. Start at verse 4. Proverbs 28 verse 4. Mm -hmm. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. You see that thing? It says they that forsake the law, they praise the wicked. You understand? Because when you forsake the law, guess what you have been now? You are in the hands of Satan now. Okay? It says, but such as keep the law contend with the wicked. We contend with the wicked because we use the scriptures to fight our battle. The Bible is the teaching it. Okay? Jump down to verse 9 now. Watch this. Proverbs 28 verse 9. Mm -hmm. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Because guess what? It says they are turning their ear from hearing the law. The Bible teaches us, listen, you must give ear unto my word. Give me that in Psalm 28 verse 1. Psalm 28 verse 1 real quick. Okay. He that turneth his ear from hearing the law, let's see what the law says, because about what? You must open your ear to receive this instruction. Read what you got. Psalms of the 78, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Give ear, all my people, to my thing? law. Give ear, all my people, to my law. He knows that we have ears on the side of our head. And he says, open your spiritual ears. You understand? Read that part again. Psalms of the 78, verse 1. Read. Give ear, O my people, to my mm -hmm. law. Read. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. You see that thing? Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Let these words be sunk in your spirit. That's what he said right there. Okay? Let's go back. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28 verse 9. Proverbs 28 verse 9. Come on. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. Mm -hmm. Even his prayer shall be abomination. Meaning what? Your prayer will be disgusting on the side of God. Why? Because you're not giving ear to the laws of God. You are giving ear to how you feel and what you say, which is contrary to what is written in the book. Okay, verse 13 now. Watch this. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Right. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. 
Do you see that thing? So it's a two thing, it's a two part thing. It says, You must confess and forsake. It says, Then the Lord he says, I will have mercy upon you. But it says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Mean what? You making excuses for your sins. You are covering them up. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis. Okay? Give me Genesis. Because this is what happened. Hmm. You know what? Give me Job. I think that's the one. I can use the one in Job. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. One second. Okay. One second. Give me Job. Give me Job 31 verse 33. Job. Uh, Job 31 verse 33. Watch this. Because this is what our forefather Adam did. This is what Adam did. Okay. Watch this. Job chapter 31 verse 33. We, if I covered my transgressions as Adam mm -hmm. by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. You see what Adam did, our forefather? He says, if I covered my transgressions as Adam, because our forefather Adam, he was hiding. You understand? Not necessarily that the Lord, he, was, he wasn't hiding in the sense that he was hiding behind his feet. No, he made excuses for his sin. That's what that means when he says, covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. So what was he doing? He was making excuses. Because when the Lord came to what? To hold him accountable, he blamed the Lord for giving him Eve, the wife. Eve blamed the, everything that she did on the devil. They were just pointing fingers. Nobody could be from the beginning for what happened. You understand? So go back to Proverbs now. 28 verse 13. Proverbs 28 verse 13. Come on. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Read. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You see that thing? But if you confess and forsake, the Lord will have mercy upon you. But don't cover them up. Don't make excuses like our forefather did. So that's why Job, the Lord put the spirit upon our forefather Job to remind us of this thing. That don't make excuses for your sin. Now go back to Proverbs now. Chapter 9, verse 13 again. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. Read. A foolish woman is clamorous. Mm -hmm. She is simple and knows nothing. You see that thing? A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knows nothing. Now read the definition again now. Clamorous. The definition of clamorous. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Making a loud and confused noise. Making a loud and confused noise. Let's read the synonyms of that. Read that. Noisy. Mm -hmm. Loud. Vocal. Vociferous. Vociferous. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Mm. Read this one. You know what? Read this one. Shouting. Shouting. Meaning what? Loud, okay. Um, read that. Screaming. Screaming, okay. Uh, let's see. Read this one. Noisy. Noisy. So it's all saying it's all just saying the same thing, okay. Let's see on Miriam what. Mm. Ah, that's it on there. That's it on there. That's it on there. Okay. Now, let's go to, let's go to, I just wanted to show you the type of, go back to 1 Corinthians. Okay. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 34. Come on. Apologies, sir. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Mm -hmm. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Really? But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. You see that then they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. 
the law we read in Genesis 3.15. You understand? Meaning what? There must be silent and loud. You see what I'm saying? But in a week of a black queen, she's not silent, she's not loving, she's not a gift of the, she's not a gift from the law. She's a gift of Satan. She's a curse from Satan. Okay? Watch this. Give me now, give me the book of Psalms. Okay? Give me Psalms chapter 39 verse 5. We're going to deal with the, the characteristics of the black queen. Okay? Watch this. Psalms 39 verse 5. Psalms chapter 39 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, mm -hmm. and mine age is as nothing before thee. Read. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Salah. You see what it says? It says, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Meaning, every man at their best behavior, the Lord is saying, you understand? It says, it's all together vanish. It's all a it's all a lie. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Next verse, watch this. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Read that again. Sh Psalm chapter 39, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Every man walketh in a vain show. Meaning what? Faking the fun. You understand? He's saying there are some people they don't want to keep it a hundred. That's what he says right there. They don't want to keep it straight. Every man walketh in a vain show. They are putting on a show. Sisters are good with that. And sisters can do it for long. You understand? They can push that small wall for long. Okay? Read again verse 6. Psalm 39 verse 6. Read. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Come on. Surely they are disquieted in vain. Mm -hmm. right. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. So now he's saying, guess what? Even their mindset is not correct because their mindset, they are just focusing on what? They are focusing on the things that are uncertain. Uncertain vision. You understand? They are walking in a vain show. They put him in a front. Now watch this. Give me Proverbs 31 verse 30. Because sisters, they always, you know, you ever hear the sisters be saying, you know, I, you know, for once, you know, I've been from this relationship, I've been on that relationship, I've been with that brother, I've been with that brother, I've been with that sister. So I didn't make a mistake of what I said. I've been with that sister, so on and so forth. Okay, I cannot find a good man. I cannot find a death. But when you look at her, how she looks, she's walking in a vain show. She's got fake eyelashes. She's got fake nails. She's got fake hair. You understand? Um, she's got a fake breath. Everything is just fake. But she's talking about, I'm looking for a real man. That don't make no sense. Okay? We what you got. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Proverbs 31 verse 6. Verse 30. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Read. Favor is deceitful. Mm -hmm. And beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. You see what it says? It says favor is deceitful because favor goes into what? There's favor that is here, but there are some favors that are what? They are deceitful. They are bright. Okay? Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. You see what it says? But it says, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be great. Because she, when she fears the Lord, that endures forever. But the beauty only endures forever in the mind of them that keep the commandment. Because they see the bigger picture. Okay? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 316. Because what you want to notice is that the black queen, they are always into their look. They, that's all they care about. What it looks on the outside doesn't matter what it looks on the inside. Mm -mm. As long as on the outside is good, they don't care what it looks like on the inside. Even if they are a walking uh, graveyard, it doesn't matter. As long as it looks good on the outside, you're good to go. Watch this. Isaiah 316. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. Read. Moreover, the Lord saith, mm -hmm. because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. Come on. Walking and minting as they go mm -hmm. and making a tinkling with their feet. So now, the Isaiah is going into the daughters of Zion, which is what? The women. Okay. Is that the daughters of Zion are haughty. 
Now, that's not a regular Negro word. I'm gonna go, I'm, I went over this before, but I'm gonna go over it again. Hochi, let's get the definition of the word. Hochi, there's some new people up in here, okay? Let's get the definition of the word haughty. What that means? Because they don't. You, I never heard a Negro be using that word on a regular basis. Going to buy a patro and all that. Read what you got. The definition of haughty. Uh -huh. Haughty, blatantly and disdainfully proud. You see that thing? It is blatantly and disdainfully proud. Meaning this sister right here, the Lord is talking about the black, the black woman, by the way, the black queen. Okay, is this blatantly and disdainfully proud? Go ahead. Having or showing an attitude of superiority and contempt for people or things perceived to be inferior. You see that thing? That's the mind of the black woman today. Because by the way, society has taught the black woman to think that she's better than her black man. I'm going to say that again in case I start. The media society, the way the world is now, they have taught the black woman to think that she's better than her black man. Guess what? We came, we went into slavery together, okay? We were colonized together. We were oppressed under apartheid together. Guess what? We're going to be delivered together. The man being the head, the man in the front, the woman supporting and following this black man. Understand that thing. Read that again. Read that definition again. The definition of haughty, mm -hmm. blatantly and disdainfully proud, Ray. having or showing an attitude of superiority and contempt for people or things perceived to be inferior. You see that thing? It says having or showing an attitude of superiority and contempt, hatred for people or things perceived to be inferior. Give me the book of Jeremiah. Is it Jeremiah? Okay, let me see, let me see, let me see. One second. Okay, it's not part of my notes, but I want it. Jeremiah 31 verse 22. Give me that thing. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22. Read. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Mm -hmm. A woman shall compass a man. You see that thing? It says the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Meaning, this is not a natural thing that is happening in the earth. It's a new thing. Meaning what? This is idolatry right here. Okay? There's a new thing. There's a new spirit in the earth, which is what? Women worship. Men worshiping the woman and women wanting to be worshipped by the man. That's why today you hear the spirit. They really make me sick to my stomach. They be saying the black woman is gone. The black woman is the queen of heaven. Shut the hell up. Okay. Read that again. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 22. Read. How long would thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Come on. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. Mm -hmm. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man. You see that thing? So now in society now, the black woman has been given to him. Now she's in positions now where she makes more money than the black man. And guess what, what that means in the mind of the black woman? This nigga can't tell me nothing. This Negro cannot tell me nothing. I run the house now because I get paid more than me. That's the mindset. Because she gets paid more than her husband, now in her mind, she's better than her husband and she runs that house. Now the husband must bow down to her. You can't make this stuff up. And a lot of these black women, because in their mind, money is all in all. They neglect their children, they hate their husband. You understand? Guess what? They are the ones that ended up being they end up being single mothers. Why? Because they think that money is more than having a head over your head and taking care of the children and building a family. You see that thing right there? That's why today many black families, many families are broken. One of that's one of the main contribution reasons for that. Because when you look at the statistics today, black women are the ones that are initiating divorce. They are the ones that are initiating divorce. And we're going to go through that. Black women today, they are the main ones that are initiating divorce. They, you know what? Now I feel so free because in their mind, marriage is a, is a what? Marriage is oppression. 
Marriage is a slave contract. That's what many of them say. You see that thing? Because they don't think about their nation. They don't care about their nation. That's the point. Okay? Now, go back to Isaiah. Chapter 3. Verse 16 again. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. Right. Moreover, the Lord saith, uh -huh. because the daughters of Zion are haughty. They are what? And walk are haughty. They are haughty. The Lord is saying the daughters of Zion, the black woman, is that they are haughty. They are, what is the definition? Blatantly and disdainfully proud, having or showing an attitude of superiority and contempt for people or things perceived to be inferior. That's what the Lord is saying about the black woman. Okay, read. And walk with stretch forth necks they and want on eyes. Hold on. They walk with stretch forth necks. Meaning what? They are in everybody's business. They like to gossip. They like to speak ill of their neighbors. They like to speak evil of other sisters. You know what I've never seen? It's very rare when you can see sisters correcting other sisters. They don't want to correct one another. The sister will be going around, sleeping around. None of the sisters will stand up and say, you are acting like a, we are acting like a war right now. The sisters don't do that. They don't correct one another. You see, brothers can do that. The brothers can tell one another, bro, you are out of order. That thing that you are doing is going to get you killed. Sisters don't do that. They don't correct each other. They, they, they what? They call it enabler. They enable one another to do evil. And when the black man comes in and corrects them, they say, you know, you hate women. You see that thing? Because they don't like to be told about themselves. That's the point. Okay? Read that part again. Isaiah 3 verse 16. Read. Moreover, the Lord said, mm -hmm. Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, Read. and walk with stretch forth necks, they and want on eyes. They walk with stretch forth necks, and what? And want on eyes. Stop right there. And want an eye. Let's deal with it. Give me the right thing to this night. And want an eye. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, 26, 26, and verse 9. And what an eye. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 9. Right. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. You see that thing? The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty look. Meaning what? A proud look. You see that thing? A proud and disdainful look. A proud look meaning you can't tell me nothing. You understand? It says uh, the whoredom of a woman may be known in a haughty look. What is a proud look? A proud look. What is pride? Give me that interaction. Let's see what is pride. So we can understand what the Lord is saying right here. Interaction and verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 12. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 12. Mm -hmm. The beginning of pride is when one departs from God. Come on. And his heart is turned away from his maker. You see what I'm saying? It says, and his heart is turned away from his maker. He means they departed from the most high. So pride is when you want, when you go against the laws of God. Because the most high God gives you a righteous look. What is a righteous look? How you dress. You see that thing? The type of apparel you put on tells you, dictates whether you're the proud look or you're the righteous look. A righteous look is a sister wearing a long dress with her head covered where we don't see the shape of her behind, where we don't see her cleavage, we don't see the crack of her behind. That's a righteous look. But a proud look is when a sister where we see her brood, where we see her breast, we see her bum all out. You see what I'm saying? Where we, they're wearing mini skirts, they're wearing leggings, they're wearing um, tight jeans and all of that, so on and so forth. That's a proud look. Okay, watch this. Jump up to verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Really? For such an one setteth his own soul to sail. Mm -hmm. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. You see what he said? You see this, this verse right here? So it says, why is earth and ashes proud? Earth and ashes is making reference to man. Watch this. Genesis 17, verse 32. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 32. Let's understand what it means when it says earth and ashes. 
Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 32. Read. He viewed the power of the height of heaven, mm -hmm. and all men are but earth and ashes. You see that thing? And all men are but earth and ashes. Okay, go back to where was that? Because we make from the dust of the ground. Read what you got. Tra 10 verse 9. Read that again. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? Mm -hmm. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Now, in this case, we are talking about the woman, the black queen. There's more wicked thing than a, than a, what a covetous man. In this case, a covetous woman. Because the Bible is written in a masculine form. Okay? It says there's, more, there's no more wicked thing than a covetous man. Because when she has a proud look, that's the state of covetousness because she's willing to go outside of God's laws to dress inappropriately and promiscuously. Why is she doing that? Keep reading. For such an one setteth his own soul to sail. Mm -hmm. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. You see what he's saying? You know what that means when he says, while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. Meaning he's willing to sell, she's willing to sell her behind. You see that thing? She's willing to sell her behind. Because why would she dress like that? What is she doing? She's advertising. That's the mindset of a black queen. It's always it's all about beauty, how she looks. You understand? And what the Bible says is that beauty is vain. Because if her, her entire existence is based on how she looks, the amount of things that she's willing to do to maintain that quote unquote um, beautiful look, guess what she will do? She's going to sell her own behind to get what she wants, which is what? Outside of God's law. I hope everybody understands that. Okay, so now go back to Sarah 26, verse 9. Let's read that again. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 9. Read. Really? The whoredom of a woman may mm -hmm. be known in her haughty looks and, and eyelids. A haughty look is a proud look. You understand? That's why he is saying the whoredom of a woman. So if you see, if the, the sister is, a, is she, she's got a, the mindset of a whore, it says the whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty look. Meaning the type of her look her look it does not is not according to what the sister says. Her look is according to what the world says. That's why now ladies are supposed to be undergarment. You wear a dress, and then underneath that dress, you can dress put on ladies. But today the ladies now is outside garments now. They can walk around wearing ladies, they can go to the shops wearing ladies, where we see their camel toes. They don't care. That's a haughty look. Because in her mind, she's hot. No, she's not hot. She's hot. Okay. Now it says, in her haughty look and eyelids. That, what is that talking about? Wanting eyes. Evil sexual eyes. Meaning what? The way she looks at men, the way she does her eyes. She paints her face. You understand? She should be wearing these long eyelashes. We call them umbrella. Because that's what they call them. You understand? It's a prostitute back in the day. They used to wear that. So that when they dealt with men, men don't have to pick on them, if you know what I mean. So they used to wear long eyelashes called umbrellas. Read that again, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 9. Read. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her hooty looks and eyelids. And eyelids. You see that thing? Watch an eye. Watch this. Remember, the glamorous woman is the black queen. The, the, another synonym is they said Jezebel, right? Give me second king. Okay, chapter 9, verse 6. Second king, chapter 9, verse 6. When we deal with these topics, guess what? Jezebel is always in the mix. Okay, watch this. Second king, chapter 9, verse 6. Now, this is when the Lord sent Jehu to kill all those that were connected to Ahab. That's black Ashi demon. Okay? So the Lord said, listen, everybody that pisses against the wall, meaning the male, the male of Ahab lineage, they must all be put to death. And Jezebel also was to be put to death and had bar a blood. Meaning what? The, 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 when she died, the body was going to be eaten by fowls of the earth and her blood was going to be eaten drank by dogs. Dogs were going to eat her flesh and drink her blood. Watch this. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 13. Read what you got. 
Second Kings chapter 9 verse 30. Come on. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, mm-hmm. Jezebel heard of it. Wait. And she painted her face you see what and tired. This is the mindset of Jezebel. It's all, she's all into her look. You understand? And her look is not right, it's not a righteous look. It's a haughty look. You see, when, it is when Jezebel heard that Jehu was coming to pay a visit, you see what the first thing she did? She didn't pray to the Lord. No. Jezebel painted her face. Read verse 30 again. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 30. Read. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, mm-hmm. Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face Read. and tired her head Read. and looked out a wit and you looked out at a window. Is it is that she painted her face and tied her head? Then what? She put her makeup on, wanted eye. You know, she 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 did herself. Because get what was the mindset? The, the Jezebel, what was the Jezebel's mindset? She's going to say, Juke this man. This is Jezebel's mindset. Because her power is where? Between her knees. That's where Jezebel's power is by the way. Okay? She will catch the silk. So now it's saying she what she painted her face and tied her head. Watch this. Go back to go back to Isaiah. Okay, go back to Isaiah chapter 3. Read the 16 again for me. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. Mm-hmm. Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty Come on. and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton mm-hmm. eyes. And what? And wanton eyes. And wanton eyes. That's the proud look, that's the haughty look that we read about. You know? Walking and minting as they go mm-hmm. and making a tinkling with their feet. And walking, he says, walking and minting as they go. And making a tinkling with their feet. You see the way they work, the, the way the way they walk. You see that thing. You, you know, whenever, especially when we teach in, in midwest, right, on the street, you see the sisters be passing there. Because some of the sisters we see them all the time. And whenever they pass there, they make sure that when they leave, wherever they stay, they be wearing mean skirts, bum shorts, and all of that, and they be wearing high heels. And when the sister walks. You can see that she's really forcing herself to be shaking her back. And she sees she's struggling, but the sister she's forcing, walking and meeting as they go. Watch this. Give me Sarah 19 to 29. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 29. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 29. Read. Really? A man may be known by his look. He says, a man. A man or woman may be known by her look. The way she looks. Go ahead. And one that has understanding by his countenance. Because his countenance will be shining. Okay, go ahead. When thou meetest him. When thou meetest him. Like you read in the chapter 3, 8 and 1. Read. A man's attire. Mm-hmm. And, and excessive laughter. Go ahead. And gait. Show what he is. And what? And excessive laughter and gait mm-hmm. show what he is. It says excessive laughter and gait. 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 Gait is the way in which they calculate how movement is done. Gait. Okay. So that's what it means. It's walking and mincing as they go. Meaning the way she walks. It says a man's attire, meaning her dress coat, meaning a man's attire or woman's attire, the way she's dressed. Excessive laughter was coming out of her mouth. You see that thing? Because what do you think Jezebel had to say to to to, to Jehu? She wasn't she, she wasn't gonna pull out the scripture. No. So it says, and gait, walking in the way they walk to entice the man. That's the mind of the, the queen, the black queen. That one of the main things in her mind is her look. You understand? And she puts her heart and soul in the way that she looks. Well, I'm not saying the sisters mustn't take care of themselves. Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying it. I'm saying the mindset, that's where the mindset is. You see that thing? Okay, go back to where we were there. Isaiah chapter 3. Okay, Isaiah 3 verse 16 again. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. 
rain. Moreover, the Lord said, mm -hmm. because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wow. wanton eyes, mm -hmm. walking and minting as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. And making a tinkling with their feet because they used to wear uh, ankle bracelets back then and so forth. Now, next verse, watch it. Therefore, the Lord will smite with the scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. Now we're gonna we're gonna take the meat of this bone right here. It says, therefore, the Lord will smite, okay, meaning judgment, with a scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Now, watch this. Let's understand what is the crown. Okay, because the scab is took about what? It took about the uh, it took about a plague. Of your scalp. That's why the sisters now they've got what? They've got alopecia where the hair is falling off. You understand? They've got patches on their head. Mm -hmm. That's the scare. Okay, they are losing hair. The hairline is gone. They're looking bald and so forth. That's the judgment that is coming from the Most High. It says, with the scare, the crown of the head of the daughter of Zion. What is this crown? Give me that thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. We're going to start from here. First Corinthians 11, so we're going to start at the spot. Because the Lord says he's going to, he's going to smite with the scab. He's going to smite the head of the daughters of Zion with the scab, the crown of their head. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 11, and let's start at the spot. We watch God. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. Come on. But every man, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head covered, no, no, With her no, head. no. Read again from the top. Come on. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. Mm -hmm. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Read. For, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. So now the Apostle Paul is giving the order of men and women. Now he's dealing with the woman. He says, but every woman that prayeth or prophesy with her head uncovered. Meaning what? The sister does not have a head left on. Okay? It says, dishonored her head. Who is the head? The Lord. The husband is her head. You see that thing? Her husband is her head. It says, it says, for that, because that is even all one is as if she was, she was shaven. So the Lord, is the, the Lord now is saying, um, the Apostle Paul now, with the, in the spirit of Christ, said, listen, it was all, it was the same as, as though she was what? She had a bald head on her head. That's what the Lord is saying. You understand? It's, a, it's all one. It's the same thing to be in the sight of the Most High. When the sister is praying or prophesying, her head is uncovered. It is it's the same as though she shaved her head. Now, what's the next verse? Go ahead. For if the woman be not covered, mm -hmm. let her also be shorn. You see what he's saying? He says, if the woman, if, if the woman be not covered, if she does, if she, she does not want to be covered, he says, shave her hair off. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, if she does not want to cover her hair, he says, shave her hair off. Why is that needed? Because remember, this needed to happen in the congregation. So that everybody can see that that sister right here. She is the devil, the Bible speaks of. Because just so that she, in, in order for her to honor her husband or the, the leaders of the congregation, she rather, she rather allow her hair to be shaved off. So guess what? Because I know how the Jezebel woman thinks. She's going to say, okay, so which means, because me, I don't want to cover my hair, I'll rather shave my hair off. So what does that prove? You don't want to honor the edge that is being set over you. So either way, you see that thing right there? Because they always find loopholes, by the way. Me, I'll rather, okay, if I, so not because I don't want to cover my head, that's fine. I'll rather, I'll rather go to the shibara shop and they'll make chip up on my head. Guess what? That just proves you the demon. That's some heavy stuff right here. Read that again, verse 6. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6. Go ahead. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shown. Read. 
But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. You see what now the Apostle Paul comes back and says, listen, it's a shame for a woman to, for a head to be shaved off. He says, that's a shame. You see what I think? He says, guess what? She must be covered. That's the point. Because this verse right here, the sisters don't want to, the, the sisters, well, we've met the men on the streets before, and they, some of them, they dispute what, what we just read. You know what? Because they say, no, my hair is my covering. No. It's talking about your hair is your covering of beauty. He's not talking about the covering here in terms of what? Submission. He's not talking about that. He's talking about your crown. Your hair is your crown of beauty. Not what we're reading here. Now read the 16. No, no. You know what? Keep going. Read the 7. The 7. Mm -hmm. For man indeed ought not to cover his head. Meaning a man must not be covering his head. So that's why brothers cannot be having their head covered, okay, so on and so forth. Why? Because they are dishonoring, you are dishonoring your head, which is who? Jesus the Christ. Read. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Come on. But the woman is the glory of the man. You see that thing? That's another thing right there. Because I remember there was years ago. Um, Kanimba, and I see a lot of sisters, they say the same thing as well. They say, no, we are making the image of God. No. The woman is not made in the image of God. The man was made in the image of God. The woman was made in the image of the man. You see that thing? That's what this verse is saying. Read verse 7 again. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 7. Read. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Mm -hmm. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. Well, so, but guess the, what? The man is the image and glory of the most High God. Go ahead. But, but the woman but, is the glory you know, of the man. But the woman is the glory of the man. So what is the woman's glory? Because she is the head job is to do what? To glorify the man. That's her job on this earth. Our job is to glorify Christ. Okay? Her whole duty upon this earth is to glorify the man. These bring glory unto men. You understand? So what is what is the woman? What, what is the woman's glory there? Keep going. We, let's just deal with the man now. Go ahead. For the man is not of the woman, mm -hmm. but the woman of the man. You see that thing? But the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Meaning the woman comes from man. We don't come from the woman, she comes from us. Great. Right. Neither was the man created for the woman, mm -hmm. but the woman for the man. Read verse 9 again, because I know some brothers are scared to hear this thing. Read again. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman, mm -hmm. but the woman for the man. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So you, you sisters, you were created for the man. Not the other way around. Mm -mm. I know what the white man has taught you. That's a lie. You were not created. You were created on this earth for the man. We were not created for you. You were created for us. That's why Adam was made first. Then the woman. And they took the woman and brought her to the man. You see that thing as a possession. Now, watch this. Mm. Read this man again. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman, mm -hmm. but the woman for the man. Now watch this. Now I want to show you something. Give me Genesis 3, verse 17. Because here's another thing. Because today in society, what we, the sisters have been taught is that you ever hear sisters complain? Because I'm going to show you some videos. Sister, be complaining. No, he doesn't listen to me. No, he doesn't. Listen, we were not created to listen to you either. We were to go. Genesis 3 17. Really? He doesn't listen to me. He doesn't understand me. Listen, we were to go. Genesis 3 17. Let's see what happened when Adam did that thing. Really? Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. Really? And unto Adam he said, uh -huh. Because thou was hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. You see that thing? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of your wife. That's why it says a silent and loving woman. 
Because she's supposed to be silent listening to me, her husband. Not the other way around. You don't hear a silent and loving husband. You don't hear that in the script. You will never read that in the Bible. A silent and loving woman. Because her job is to pay attention, listen, and learn. And apply that which she learned. You see that thing? Because her job is to glorify you. Verse 17, one more again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, mm -hmm. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Now the Lord is, is what? The Lord is judging Adam now. Because Adam decided to listen to his wife. Okay, read. And hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, mm -hmm. Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Ray. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see what the problem is? You see what happened? You see the judgment? Because Adam listened to his wife, when you were supposed to listen to who? You were supposed to listen to the most high. He wasn't supposed to listen to his wife. Because that's why Adam was created first, and Adam was given what? Law, order, and judgment, and power. He was the God on this earth. Now, after that, he was created to be brought to Adam, Adam to teach him. That's why when the Lord, when, when Satan came to him, she repeated the same thing that was told to Adam. Because where did she get that stuff from? She got it from Adam, her husband. Now, here, the 17, Adam decided to switch gears. Now, the Lord said, I'm going to judge you now because you are listening to your wife. You're not supposed to be listening to your wife. You're supposed to listen to me. She's supposed to listen to you. That's the order. But the black queen, that's kryptonite to the black queen. That is kryptonite to the black queen. She don't like that. Okay? Now, go back to where you were there. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9. Read. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. But the woman was created to serve the man. The woman was created to glorify the man, not the other way around. You understand? Because I remember uh, my sister, okay, my black sister that, you know, that I grew up around. She said something when I was uh, in the booty. She said something, she said, you know what? If you want your house to be in order, this is what she said. She was talking to, she was saying something. Okay, she said, if you want your house to be in order, if you want your house to be, to be a peaceful house, guess what you must do? You must respect, you must be quiet and respect and honor your husband. That's what she said. And when we grew up, my, my sister was loud as hell. You couldn't say tell her nothing. But guess what? Marriage humbled my sister. You see what I'm saying? Marriage humbled my sister. Now she's very calm. She's got wisdom in her head now. You see what I'm saying? And she said, if you want a peaceful house, respect and honor, submit yourself to this man. That's what she said. And guess what? It's throughout the Bible. But today, the black queen, they don't want to do that thing. Because the society has taught them they can be over the black man and be loud and obnoxious. Okay? Watch this. Remember, we're still dealing with the crown. The Lord says, I'm going to smite the scared, the crown of the head of the black woman. Watch this. Now give me 1 Corinthians 11, verse 16. Let's see the crown of the black woman. What is her crown? Because this is her glory. Okay, we want we want to go. First Corinthians eleven verse fifteen. First Corinthians chapter eleven verse fifteen. Read. Right. But if a woman have long hair, mm -hmm. it is a glory to her. It is a what? It is a glory to her. It is a glory to her. So if the sister, it talk about your hair. Your hair is your glory. You understand? Your hair is your glory. Is your crown? It's a covering of beauty. Okay, come on. It is a glory to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. You see that thing? For her hair is given her for a covering. It's a covering of beauty. It's not talking about that you must not supposed to put your, you're not supposed to put your, 
you're not supposed to put the head right off. He's not talking about that. Because I'll prove it. Watch this. If that was the case, give me the book of Genesis 26 real quick. Our poor mother, Rebecca, when she saw, when she had to, when she was meeting Isaac now, her husband, watch this. Uh, Genesis. Wait. No, no, Genesis 24. Genesis chapter 24 and verse, read verse 60, read verse 65. Genesis chapter 24, you know verse 65. Start of verse 64. Start of verse 64. You're going to read that. Genesis chapter 24, verse 54. No, 64. 64. Verse 64. Mm -hmm. Come on. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. No, no. This is our former mother, Rebecca. Now. She got off the camel. Come on. For she had said unto her servant, Mm -hmm. But man is this that walketh in the field to meet us. Right. And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. You see that thing? She took a veil and covered herself. So you need to tell me, why didn't she say, wait a minute, but you know, my hands, my covering. She didn't say that. She took a veil and covered herself. Why? Because she was what? She was showing, she was showing a sign of submission. To her husband. You understand? She didn't say no, but my head, my covering. Wait a minute. No. She understood law and order. She understood law and order and what it means to be a wife. She understood that thing, that she must submit herself. Okay? That's why she took a veil and covered herself as a sign of what? Reverence to our forefather Isaac. Okay? So now, today, you notice that. Our sisters today, guess what? They put all their outward appearance as what, what makes them. You understand? Everything about them is how they look. It doesn't matter what's coming out of their mouth. It doesn't matter how they deal with their children. It doesn't matter how, do, how they deal with their husband. It doesn't matter how they deal with their brothers. They, how they deal with their father. You see that thing? It doesn't matter. Because you, we will go to camp, right? We'll be teaching on the street. And we be teaching Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. Okay, this is what the black woman will. This is what will come out of the mouth of the black woman. What about the white man? She never asked. What about my father? What about my brother? What about my husband? No, she don't care about that. Okay. First Peter three verse three. Watch this. First Peter chapter three verse three. Read it. First Peter chapter three verse three. Come on. Whose adorning did it not be that outward uh, that outward adorning of plating the hair, mm -hmm. and of wearing gold, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on the of apparel? Okay, read it again. Read it right. Read verse three again. First Peter chapter three verse three. Read. Whose adorning did it not be? That outward adorning of pleating the hair, mm -hmm. or of wearing of gold, really? or of putting on of apparel. So now the apostle Peter comes back and says, "Listen, the beauty of a woman is not necessarily based on what she looks on the outside, because that's the mindset of the black queen. These queens that we have, you know, these disrespectful sisters that disrespect their husband, they don't submit. You can't tell them nothing. They don't want to be corrected about nothing. Guess what?" It says, who adorning let it not. Because guess what? It, during the, the time of the Apostle Peter, that's what it was in the mind of our sister. That's why it says, let it not be the outward adorning of placing the hair. Because they put everything on placing of the hair. They didn't care about the household. They didn't care about making sure that the, the house is in order. The children are fed. The children are taught. They are educated. They didn't care about that. They only care about the wake up in the morning. They bath, they dress up, their hair is all done, they smell good, but the house is out of order, the children are not dressed properly. The children, listen, that's the mindset of the black queen. Because during this time, that's what they were doing. Read verse 3 again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. 
whose adorning let it not be that out of the adorning of plating the hair yes. and of wearing of gold Wait. or of putting on of apparel. Because that's what they care about. They woke up, they plated their hair, they, they were wearing of gold, putting on jewelry, okay, it's a, and putting on of a pattern to dress up. But they did not care about the, 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 the other important thing. It doesn't mean these things are not important, but that's the mindset. Because you see it. You, you ever see it? When we go to teach on the street, you see a mother. She leaves the house, right? She goes to the, to the mall. We see it in Sanctuary. We see wherever we go to teach. The mother will be all dressed up, looking good, but the child doesn't look good. The child is not even bad. But the mother, she, she's wearing high heels. The child is not even, the child's face is what? It's dry, no lotion, she eats, but nothing. Because she don't care about the child. She only cares about herself and the men that will be wanting to sleep with her. That's what she cares about. You understand? That's why the Apostle Peter had to address this thing. Because it was a common thing back there. You see that thing? Watch this. The Apostle Paul addressed the same thing. First Timothy. Okay? First Timothy chapter 2. Because the same thing we're seeing now is the same thing that our forefathers were addressing during this time. And this is during the time of Rome. Okay, watch this. Give me that in first P first Timothy chapter one. First Timothy chapter one and verse two. Start of verse one. First Timothy one and one. Watch this. First Timothy chapter one, verse one. Go ahead. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, mm -hmm. and and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Which is our hope. Go ahead. Watch this. And to Timothy, my own son, in the faith, Wait. grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Watch this. Now he's writing to Timothy, right? Go ahead. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, you went? when I went, when I abide still, to abide still at Ephesus. So now he told, he told Timothy, listen, I want you to remain at Ephesus. Okay, remain at Ephesus. Go ahead. When I went into Macedonia, mm -hmm. that thou mightest charge some that some that they teach no other doctrine. So now he's telling Timothy, say, listen, at Ephesus, I want to make sure that you teach no any other doctrine outside of what I taught you. Now watch this. Now we need to understand what was the doctrine that was being taught at Ephesus. That the apostle Paul had to do this thing. Watch this. Let's go to the book of Acts. Okay. Let's go to the book of Acts because this is the this is what was being taught at Ephesus. Why the apostle Paul had to address this thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter nineteen. Okay. Acts chapter nineteen, start of verse one. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. So he found certain disciples there. Now jump down to the... Read verse 21 now. Jump down to the... You know what? Start of verse 17. Read verse 17. Acts chapter 19, verse 17. Read. And this was known to all the Jews, to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell, fell on them, and the name of the Lord, Jesus, was magnified. Because guess what? They were teaching the gospel because there was a lot of evil that was going on at Ephesus. Now watch this. Jump down to the 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. After these things were ended, Paul, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. Now, they have, remember, the Apostle Paul is journey. He's coming to different cities where our forefathers are scattered, right? Go ahead. So he, sent, so he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, mm -hmm. Timotheus and Aristarchus and Aristus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. So now you notice that Timothy, right? 
It says, leave, the 20, leave 21 and 22 together for Acts chapter 19, verse 21. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus. So but now, he himself, mm -hmm, go ahead. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. So now I want to I want to show you something. The apostle Paul he passed through Macedon, Macedon. Okay. Then later on he sent Timothy and Erastus over there. Now watch this. Keep going. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, mm -hmm. wrote no small gain unto the craftsmen. So now Demetrius was a silversmith. His job was to create shrines, meaning groves. You understand? For Diana. Diana is the Milanic of Babylon, ancient Babylon of Nimrod. The mother or the wife, the mother and the wife of what? Uh, Nimrod's wife and mother. Okay, out of them came Tammuz. But Diana here, of the Ephesians, this is Isis. Okay, so Isis was being worshipped in at, at Ephesus. Okay, now watch this. So when we read in the book of T in Timothy, Timothy now is at Ephesus now. Because remember, the apostle Paul was not staying in the places. He was passing through. Okay, keep going. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, mm -hmm. Spirit, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Right? Because they make money making this right? right? Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. Because at Ephesus, guess what was going in all Asia, by the way. It wasn't just at Ephesus, it was in all Asia, that's Asia Minor, that's Greece. Our people were scattered over there. You've got Thessalonica, you've got Corinth, which is in Greece. All those cities and islands, guess what was going on? Diana was being worshipped. So now, Diana is the worshipping of the woman, the goddess of fertility, the goddess of sex, the goddess of war. You understand? Diana was being worshipped at Ephesus and all throughout all Asia. That's why the Apostle Paul had to write to Timothy when he was at Ephesus at that point. So listen, make sure that they teach no any other doctrine. Because what was going on at Ephesus? They were worshipping Diana. Worshipping of the woman. Now, let's go to 1 Timothy now. Chapter 2. Okay. 1 Timothy 2 verse 9. Watch this. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Go ahead. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, really? with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. That's the same thing that the Apostle Peter was saying. Because that's what the, our sisters were saying. They put everything about their existence on their look. They didn't care about the important things that you read about in Titus 2. They didn't care about that. The household, being reverent in their husbands, respecting their fathers and so forth. You understand? Taking care of their children, taking care of the household. They didn't care about that. They only care about what? It says what? In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Because if you look at the statue of Diana of the Ephesians, she, that woman is naked. And that's what our sisters used to dress up back then because they were under the Greek fashion, the Roman culture. Today is our... Is Europe, European and Western culture. That's what they are following today. The same way they were following back then under the Rome, the Roman, which is part, which is what? Extension of the Greek. So it, the same way it was back then, so it is today. The same thing. Read verse 9 again, first Timothy. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Go ahead. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel. Because they were not wearing more as a pair. They had 40 looks. You, you see what I'm saying? 
They had what to look, they didn't have more as Kapal. Red? With same faceness. Meaning they had and no so shame. They did it shamelessly because of what? Their pride. Red? With same faceness and sobriety. Mm -hmm. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Because they would death themselves. They would wake up in the morning instead of taking care of the house or be that problem saying one woman. They wouldn't do that. They would wake up. This is what they would do. They would dress inappropriately, promiscuously, without shame, you know, without sobriety. Okay? They would braid their hair, gold, pearls, of course, yeah. They would be dating themselves because that's what Diana, the sexual Diana, that's what it looked like. Where you see her breath fall out. That's how the sisters dress today. You see their breath out. You see their teeth out. You see their thighs out. That's how they dress because they were following Diana of the Ephesians. The goddess of fertility. You understand? Black women is God. Black women are taught. That's what they were doing back then. That's what they want today. Keep going. Verse 10. Come on. The sin. Mm -hmm. But which becometh women, professing godliness with good works. That is, they were not women. They were not professing godliness. They didn't have good works. That's what the Apostle Paul had to tell Timothy to check there. Okay, read. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Because this was what, what was going on in the church of Paul in the church of Ephesus. They were not learning in silence. They were challenging the leadership about, yeah, but these are women. Hey, I can dress like this. You can't tell me nothing. That's what they were doing in the church. That's why the apostle Paul is telling Timothy, listen, make sure that they teach not any other doctrine. Because the women during this time, guess what they were doing? They were ruling over the man. That's why the apostle Paul had to shut this down. In the spirit of Christ. Right. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Because what was they doing? They were teaching. He says, I allow not a woman to teach. Because that's what was going on back then. Women were standing up in the pulpit. You understand? Teaching the congregation. Which is out of order. They were, they were doing that. Because that's the mind of the black queen. The black queen, they think, yeah, I can do it. Whatever the man can do, I can do it as well. You know, today, you know, we are independent, strong black women. I can be a father. I can be a mother in the house. I can be both the mother and the father. We have to be strong. We don't have a choice. And all that garbage. Why? Only because they don't want, they don't want to, they don't want to submit to a man. Now they have to cry me a river. They be say, no, I have to be the mother. I have to be the father. I have to be the provider. I have to be the person. When you have to investigate what really happened in your heart, in fact. You're going to hear some good things will come up. They will not explain. When you examine as a man of the law, you'll see this is the right here. The problem she has is she does not want to submit to no man. That's why she's singing right now. That's why now she's a baby mom. Okay? Read. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. You see that thing? Because Adam was formed first, then Eve. Afterward, right. And Adam was not deceived, mm -hmm. but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You see that thing? Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived, that was the same. She was deceived because she was taught by Adam. But because she ate with Adam, she said, you know what? I don't want this nigga to tell me what to do. He's not going to tell me what to do. So therefore, I'm going to listen to the devil. I'm going to listen to this man that projects himself as the angel of life. I'm going to listen to him instead. That's the same thing today. The black woman, instead of listening to the black man, she'll rather listen to the white man first than to listen to you. That's why a lot of the time, the sisters, they have jobs. When they go to work, everything that their boss tells them to do, they do it without no problem. No lip, no question, no argument. No, nothing. But when she comes home, the husband says, cook some food, clean the house, take care of the children. They say, no, I'm tired. I've been working all day. Why don't you do it? You can make this stuff up. That's what they do. Listen, let's say you, you get paid a hundred million US dollars every day, and I get paid 15,000 a month. Listen to me. When you come home, you're going to cook you're going to clean, you're going to take care of the kids, and so on and so forth. It's that simple. If you don't, keep it moving. Okay? 
because the society is taught that the black thing is that because you make more money, you can tell your husband what to do. And the sin will submit to that thing. That's out of order for it to go. Okay. Now, watch this. Um, let's, let's move from there. Go back to first Peter. Okay. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter 3 verse 3. Watch this. First Peter chapter 3 verse 3. Wait. Who's adorning? Let it not be that out of the adorning of plating the hay, uh -huh. or of wearing of gold, Wait. or putting on apparel. So now the Apostle Peter said, in the religion, That's not the main focus, sisters. You're not supposed to put all your focus on that. Because another thing is that you've got sisters in the camp, they come in here wearing long dresses and all of that, but she's a hoe on the loan. Yes. She is a hoe on the loan. She's just hiding behind a long dress with fringes on and a big smile and a, a, and a head cover. But she's a hoe on the loan. She's hiding. Okay. And you think you're going to get caught up by that thing. Now watch this. Give me Matthew 23 verse 25. Okay. Matthew 23 verse 25. I want to show you the spirit of the spirit of the black queen today. Because we meet, a, we meet a lot of them on the street. Okay. We see, we, I see some characteristics in the camp. Not very Matthew 23 verse 25. But this is medication this day. Sister. This is your medication. Watch this. Matthew 23, 25. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 23, verse 25. Come on. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Uh -huh. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. So the subject matter is hypocrisy is the subject. Read. Right? For ye make clean the outside no, of no, the cup. No. 23, verse 25. You're in 25, right? Read verse 25 again. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 23, verse 25. Go ahead. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, mm -hmm. hypocrites. Come on. For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. You see what the Lord was saying? He was rebuking the scribes and Pharisees, which today would be the politicians and the Christian pastors. They are the scribes, they are the modern day scribes and Pharisees. So the Lord was saying, listen. He says he makes clean the outside of the cup and the plate and of the platter, but we see they are full of extortion and excess. They don't care about nobody else but themselves. But the outward looks good. You see what I'm saying? That's the mindset of the black woman today because they are the ones that are filling up the Christian churches. So when they leave the Christian churches, you tell them, sir, you are not supposed to wear pants. No, Jesus is in my heart. I wear what I want to wear because I'm, I look comfortable in it. No, what she's saying is that I like the attention I'm getting from there. That's why I dress like this. You see, you need to read what they're saying. They say one thing, but they mean something different. So as a spiritual man, you need to go to see through the BS. And the truth. The sister is just lying. Okay? So now, their Christ was rebuking them. He was rebuking the scribes and Pharisees because today, that's what's going on in the churches today. You can't tell the sisters nothing. Even if it's written in the Bible, they don't care about it. Because that, that's not what my pastor says. No, but what does the Bible say? To you? No, that's your interpretation. You see that? Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, uh -huh. that the outside of them may be clean also. You see what he's saying? So Christ is telling us the process on how to clean yourself. It just starts from the thing, and then guess what? What's gonna what's gonna show the outside is gonna show what's happening on the inside. That's what he's saying. But that's not the black queen today. They don't care about that. They only care about what it looks good. If it looks good on the outside, because in their mind that looks good. When they to parade their body, because they don't care about themselves, they hate their body because. Now everybody is looking at them, they comment, that's what they like. That's why you see a lot of sisters, they are on social media. They be putting their pictures over there, they like it when they get it, they got a comment, a like, and so forth. They live for that stuff. I remember there was a time, so many years ago, I think um, there was a problem, that was Blackberry was still running, right? Everybody had a Blackberry, 
and Blackberry went offline. Guess what happened? Blackberry Messenger wasn't working I think it was for a whole day. It was reported that some people jumped, some people they jumped off the rooftop. They killed themselves because of that. Okay. So now imagine if Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram was to go offline for two days. What do you think will happen? You cannot even imagine what will happen. Because some people, their life is on that day. Keep going. Verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, uh -huh. hypocrites. Wait. Really? For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, mm -hmm. which indeed appear beautiful outward. They do what? But which indeed appear beautiful outward. Is that they appear beautiful on the outside, go ahead. But are within full of dead men's bones mm -hmm. and of all uncleanness. You see that they, they are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness, meaning what? They are not repenting. They are not applying God's laws to their life. So that's why I'm saying, yes, you look good on the outside, but you're a whole on the low. You don't want us to see what you need, what's going on. But we can see it. These classes are designed so that you can sit down and examine yourself. Some sisters, they are just ostrich. They're not going to listen to nothing. Okay? Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 28. Verse 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, mm -hmm. but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You see what he's saying? It says outwardly, he says also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Go back to Psalm 39 to 6. Because I know some of you forgot already. Psalm 39 to 6. So we don't lose that thought. Okay? Psalm 39 and the 6. Psalm 39 to 6. Come on. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. You see that thing? They walk in a vain show. They are just taking the fun. They don't keep it a hundred. So now, go back to where was that? Matthew 23, verse 28. Matthew 23, verse 28. Come on. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Mm -hmm. But within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. But within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. It says you appear righteous outward unto men, walking in a vain show, faking the fun. I'm looking for a real man. I want a real man, but I've got fake lashes, fake nails, fake everything, but I want a real man. Sister, please, yeah, stop it. You're not real yourself, but you want to looking for a real man. Watch this, give it around 22, 23. This is what, you see, a lot of the times, you ask the sisters, because a lot of the times there's a lot of what? Baby mama, baby mama drama, okay? sisters that are single, and so forth and so on, they cannot get no man. And when you ask, what is the problem, sister? No, there's no good men left out there. You know, there's men at all. Men are this. Let's see what God has to say about that thing. There are 26, 23. Let's see what the issue is. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 23. Come on. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Stop right there. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So now, the sister be complaining, there's no good man out there. Okay? So sis, why did you break up with the last one? No, this happened. Why did you break up with that one? No, that happened. Why did you, that, there's always something, but they, they in, in that whole, in that whole long tail, nothing is their fault. But what did the Bible say? Read verse 23 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 23. Read. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. You see that thing? A wicked woman will be given as a portion, as a gift to a wicked man. So guess what? You, you, because you yourself are wicked as hell, guess what the Lord will give you as a gift and a portion to you? Will give you unto you a wicked man. You understand? You see, the sister says, no, I'm married, okay? Uh, but my husband is cheating on me. My husband is doing this. My husband is doing that. But when you examine, the, when the world will listen to that long tail. Nobody examines the sister and says, what are you doing wrong today? What are, what, what are you contributing to this whole thing? Guess what? 
but they don't look at it spiritually. The sister be wearing pants, she don't honor her husband, she's disrespectful to him, she, all of that stuff. Now the Lord is saying, okay, here's what gonna, I'm gonna, here's the gift I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a man that's gonna cheat on you, he's not gonna take care of you. You see what I'm saying? He will abuse you, so on and so forth. Why? Because you are wicked as hell yourself. You don't want to keep the command. And that's the reason. But they not they know they won't admit to that. You see that thing? You ask the sisters what happened in your past and so forth. It's only somebody else's fault. Mm -mm. Listen, you were wicked as hell. That's why you got there as a gift. Now, watch this. Give me, give me the book. Go back to Isaiah now. Let's go back there. Okay. Isaiah chapter 3. You see, Isaiah 3, that's a heavy book right there. Okay. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 17 again. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 17. Go ahead. Therefore, the Lord will smite with the scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. The Lord will discover their secret parts. Now remember, he said he's going to what? Smite with the scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. We understand what is their crown. Their crown is their head. Okay? Their, their crown is their head. It is a covering of beauty. Right? Now the Lord says, he's going to what? He will discover their secret path. In order for the Lord to be, because this is judgment now. Okay? The Lord says, I'm going to discover your secret path. Now watch this. Give me the book. Okay? Give me the book of, um, hmm. no, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go to Joshua, but I want to go there. Hmm. Watch this. Sarah 19, 29. Let's go back to Sarah chapter 19, verse 29. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 9. Mm -hmm. A man may be known by his look. A man may be known by the way they look. Go ahead. And one that has understanding by his countenance. When thou meetest him. When thou meetest them, okay, you're gonna you're gonna tell what type of person this is by the way that they look, particularly next verse. Go ahead. A man's attire. Attire, your dress code, the way you dress will tell us what you are, what type of person you are. Read. And excessive laughter. What's coming out of their mouth, the things they say. Read. And gait. The way they walk. Okay, come on. Show what he is. They're gonna tell you. He's gonna tell you. That's that, that's the that's, that's the pre preliminary analysis of what you're dealing with. Just by the way they look. Okay. Now watch this. The Lord says He will discover the daughters of Zion's secret path. How will the Lord discover them? It starts. It begins with the way they dress. That's how the Lord discovered their secret path. It starts with the way they dress because the way they dress. Where does it begin? Where does it take place? It takes place in the mind. It takes place in the mind. The way you think, okay, or how you believe in your mind because it's based on how you think. I believe I should wear this because it makes me feel like this. It's all based on feeling. It has nothing to do with what that says the Lord. That's the point. And because of that, that's why the Lord says, I will discover you secret parts. Why? Because you, did, you have defined your own standard of beauty instead of the one that I defined for you that is written in the book. Now watch this. Give me that thing to Tommy 22 verse 5. We already, we already dealt with it in 2 Timothy 2 verse 9. But let's read it. Tommy 22 verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Mm -hmm. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So now, this is a law that was given to both men and women, but we're dealing with the woman today. Today is your day, Jesus. So now it says, a woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. What is that? That's a, that's a pen, trousers, clothing. You're not supposed to dress in pants. That's what the Lord is saying. Because when you do so, you are an abomination unto the Lord your God. That abomination is shown through your attire. Because we can tell based on your attire whether you are an abomination to the Lord or not. Whether you honor the most high God or not. Okay? That's how the Lord says, I'm because you don't want to 
follow the guidelines that I've set for you. Now I'm going to discover your success path because you've decided to come up with your own standard of beauty. Watch this. Even that in Ezekiel chapter 16. Okay. Ezekiel 16. Give me Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 14. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 14. Great. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. Mm -hmm. For it was perfect to thy comeliness. Through my comeliness. I had. For it was perfect through my comeliness, mm -hmm. which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. Because the Lord is the one that put the comeliness, the beauty on the daughters of God. The Lord did that thing because he's the author of beauty. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 13. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 13 and verse 3. Wisdom of Solomon 13 verse 3. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 3. Mm -hmm. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods. Come on. Let them now know how much better the Lord of them is. Really? For the first author of beauty hath created them. You see with the first author of beauty, the most high God. He's the author of beauty. The Lord is the first author of beauty. Now, go back to Ezekiel. 16, the 16 now. Remember, he said the beauty that he offered, he put it upon the nation of Israel. Now we're dealing with the system. He put it upon the and he says it was perfect. Now, because of I feel, I think that's what the mind that's the mindset of the black queen. Here's what they have now. Read the 16. Ezekiel 16, verse 15. Read it. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. You see that thing? But you, black woman, you, black queen, because that's what you call yourself now, the queen. It says, but you decided to trust in your own beauty. Now your beauty is vain because it's perfect, it's perfect through your own eyes. Not through the eyes of the Lord, but through your own eyes. Okay? But it really, is it really your own eyes? No. It's the eyes of your oppressor. Now your beauty is seen through the eyes of you, those that are oppressing you, those that hate and despise you. That's why you can bound, they bleach their skin, they put blonde women on their head. Why? Because they envy their oppressors. They want to be like that. They envy them. You see that thing? They touch in the, of the beauty that the oppressor has put out as the standard of beauty. You see that thing? Read verse 15 again. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 15. Read. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty mm -hmm. and playest the harlot because of thy renown. You see that thing? And Keep going. Read. And pourest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. His it was. You see what he's saying? So now they are, you are pouring out your fornication on everyone that passes by. What is the fornication? Because now you went after following after other gods now. Now you are worshiping your oppressor. That, that now you have a new God in front of you. New God that came really up. Now, that neither our fathers, that neither your fathers knew about. Now you are following new God. Now. You see that thing? Now, watch this. Give me, give me Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. So because they trusted in their own beauty instead of the beauty that the Lord has put in, because the beauty that the Lord has put in. That's the beauty of righteousness, not the beauty of haughtiness, not a haughty look. The Lord did not give the black woman a haughty look. He gave the black woman a righteous look, which she defied and went after other gods. You see that thing? Because that's the mindset of the black queen. That's the mindset. Because remember what Jezebel did in 2 Kings 9 verse 30. When she had that, not, Jehu was a man of the Lord. Jehu was a king. Now the king is coming. You see what she's doing? Because in her mind, that head then was how she looked. You see that thing? Now, Isaiah 3 verse 24. This is the judgment. Okay? 
because you're touching your own duty, there is the judgment right here. Because you're touching your own body, look, there is the judgment. Isaiah 3, verse 24. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 24. Read. And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink. Mm -hmm. And instead of a girdle, a rent. Read. And instead of well said hair, boldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. Now, let's read verse 24 again. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. Read. And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink. Stop right there. Now, remember, jump up to verse 17. Read verse 17 again. Because verse 17, it tells what the Lord will do. Now, we're reading the judgment further what the Lord will do to their secret path, okay, and to their well-fed head, to their too. Because remember he said, read verse 17. Read verse 17 for me, for him, butcher it. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 17. Read. Therefore the Lord will smite with the scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. So now the Lord he says, I'm going to smite with the scab, that your crown. What is the crown? Your head. That's their crown, because that's their covering of beauty. So the Lord is saying, listen, I'm going to destroy your hair now, because that's your covering of beauty. That's why our sisters are so obsessed with their hair, because in the spirit they know this is their covering of beauty. This is their glory. You see that thing? So now the Lord says, I'm going to destroy that thing, because that's what you care about. You don't care about you. You care about your hair. So I'm going to destroy that thing as one of the things you care about the most, more than me. Okay, now watch this. Then it says, um, and the Lord will discover their secret path. How will the Lord discover their secret path? Because they touch it in their own beauty, their own vain beauty. Now watch this. Read verse 24 now, so we can understand what the Lord is saying. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 24. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stink. Stop right there. Instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stink. Watch this. Give me the book of Numbers, chapter 5, verse 21. Instead of a stink, instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stink. Which means that then the sisters used to have a sweet smell in their secret part. Hmm. Give me that thing. Numbers, chapter 5. Okay. Numbers 5, verse 21. Read what you got. Numbers chapter 5 verse 21. Come on. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord hath made thee a curse and an oath among thy people. When the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. Because that was a curse. It was a reproach unto a woman for her thigh to rot and for her belly to swell. Why? Because of what? Because of being defiled. Because she's a queen, she knows too much, her husband's not good enough, she'd rather go outside of the marriage and defile herself. Now she's going to become a reproach and a curse among the people. What will be the, the curse? Her thigh will rot and her belly is going to swell. Keep going. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. And this water that causeth the curse shall go into thy bowels. Read. Really? To make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. Mm -hmm. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. Meaning what? I'm gonna I agree to take the water. You understand? She knows she did it, but guess what? Because the reason why I'm saying this is because when you watch these shows, right? You watch these shows where um the woman knows that this is not the baby's father, but she'll go to paternity court, you know, to stand in front of a judge. Knowing very well that he's not, he's not the baby's father. But guess what? She'll go anyway. And when the, when the results come out, she's going to say, no, they are wrong. You can't make this stuff up. But that's what we're reading it. You see that part when it says, and she, she, the woman shall say, amen, amen. She will agree. Knowing very well that the results that will come out, they are not going to save her her life. You see that thing? Ray. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall write these curses in a book and shall blot them out with the with the bitter water. 
because this was recorded so everybody knows right and he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causeth the curse mm -hmm. and the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter so now the water will enter into her and become bitter because this water will cause the curse now watch this jump down to the 27 now Verse 27. Mm -hmm. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled mm -hmm. and have done trespass against her husband, mm -hmm. that the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, her belly and, shall her thigh, swell. and her thigh shall rot. Her belly shall and swell, the womb, and her thigh, hold on, her belly shall swell, and a thigh shall rot. We're going to deal with the thigh. But I want to deal with it one in the end of the same It says the belly is going to swell and her thigh is going to rot. Go ahead. And the woman shall be a curse among her people. And the woman shall be a curse among the people. That's why now when the name of the black woman comes up, guess what? It's nothing good that you hear. The image of the black woman in, 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 in the media is not a good image. No, no. Even if she says something clever, guess what? You know, like that, there's things that Beyonce said back in the day. There's the music that she produced back in the day. Well, but now the people are challenging what she says because guess what? They realize only what the song that she produced, it was good in building in, 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 in a woman catering to her leg. Now, whenever they talk about it, you know what they put, the pictures they put out? They put the picture of Beyonce half naked. Meaning what? She's saying all of this. We are, yeah, we hear what you say, but you see how she looks? So don't take it seriously. That's the point. You see that thing? So now it says, you shall be a, she shall be a curse among her people. Now watch this. I want to show you something. Go back to Isaiah 3. We come in back here. He says it's going to cause her baby to swear, right? Okay, watch this. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. It says, The belly is going to swell and a thigh is going to rot. Watch this. Isaiah 3, 24. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well said hair, boldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding or sackcloth. Stop right there. And it, Hold on. It says, instead of the stomacher, a girding or sackcloth. So now, the, the, the Lord is telling you, the sister is going to have a big stomach. The, you see the sisters that be having abortions over and over and over? It doesn't matter how many times they go to the gym. The baby is still hanging right there, like a flappy, whatever. Why? Because of the stuff they've been doing. The abortion they've been committing, the babies they've been killing. Now the Lord is saying, okay, because I, I remember it was many, many years ago. I was still in high school, okay? There was this sister, her name was Leta. She was known in the community that this sister, she's known for committing abortion, okay? Her name was Leta. And whenever you look at the sister, right, she used to have a huge stomach. And I never understood that me, me, I thought she was pregnant. But now I'm, I'm realizing that actually that's what we're reading. That, and she was still young, but she had a huge stomach because of all the abortions. You understand? You know, she, she passed away later on. But the point is this. That's the curse that the Lord is talking about. Instead of a stomach, a getting your sex loss. You're just going to have a big day. That's what we see our people today. That's what they have. That's the curse. You see that thing? That's the curse. Now go back to Isaiah. No, no, go back to Numbers. Numbers 5 is 28. Verse 27 again. Numbers chapter 5, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have, and have done trespassed against the husband, mm -hmm. that the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and Wait. her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. It says, it says her, belly shall, her belly shall swell, 
and her thigh shall rot. Give me that in Judith 9. You know what I want? Judith 9, verse 2. Judith chapter 9, verse 2. Let's read that. Judith chapter 9, verse 2. Mm -hmm. O Lord God of my father Simeon, to whom thou gavest a sword to take vengeance of the strangers, really? loosen the girdle of a maid to defile her. Who did what? Who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her. Who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her. I want you to remember what you just said. Who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her. Go ahead. Who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her. And discovered the thigh to her shame. And discovered the thigh to her shame. Meaning what? Her secret part. You understand? Now she's defiled now. Okay. So her thigh, her secret part is going to rot. You understand? So that pinchy pinchy smell is based on what? Her being defiled because she decided to go outside of what the law said. You see that thing? Because she's a queen. She can do whatever she wants. She can do bad all by herself. You see that thing? Go back to Numbers now. Chapter, chapter 5 is 27 again. Numbers chapter 5 is 27. Mm -hmm. and you know what? Finish, finish that verse in verse 2. It says, and discovered her, the side to her shame, and then what? And polluted her virginity to her reproach. You see that thing? So the thigh is making reference to her vagina. Because they, they what? she was defiled. So now let's go back to numbers now. So the thigh is making reference to her vagina. That was defiled. So let's go back. Numbers, numbers 5 is 27. Numbers chapter 5 is 27. Mm-hmm. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespass against the husband, that the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and really? become bitter, mm -hmm. and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. And the woman shall be a curse among her people. Everybody's going to know that's the whole idea. Now watch this. Read the next verse. I want to show you something. Verse 28. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. Now read verse 28 again. I want to show you something. Read verse 28 again. Numbers chapter 5, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And if the woman be not defiled, Stop right but there. be clean. Hold on. It says, if the woman be not defiled. Let's say she was not defiled. She was she drank the, the water and it was discovered that she was, she, her belly didn't rot. I mean, her belly didn't swell and her thigh did not rot. Because guess what? That proves she did not what? She did not, she was not defiled by another man. That's what that means. Then it says, but be clean. Okay? Meaning clean from what? Clean from the accusation. Okay, go ahead. Then what? But be clean. And then she shall be free. Yeah. Uh -huh. And shall conceive seed. And shall conceive seed. Which means, if she was found to be unclean and defiled, she was not going to conceive seed. That's why a lot of sisters cannot have children. You see that thing? That's what he's saying right there. Because if she was found to be clean, she was going to be able to conceive seed. So the judgment, if you see that a lot of sisters, they cannot conceive is because of the evils they've been doing. Oh, but they're not going to tell you that. Okay? It's because of... Because I know a case. There's a brother I used to know. Okay? Back in the day. There's a brother I used to know. And what would happen was that he was married and the sister, she could not conceive. I don't know how many doctors they went to. They'd be taking x-rays and whatnot and taking pills and operations and all of that. Guess what? It doesn't matter how many times they were busting and grinding. Nothing was going on. You understand? Because guess what the sister was doing? She was being defied. Now I understand it now. Okay, I get it now. Watch this. Mm, now, they are divorced now. They are separated. Okay? Now, watch this. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 3 verse 24. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 24. Read. Really? And it shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. Then instead of a smell, a sweet smell, there shall be stink. Because of what? And 
They said, instead of a sweet smell, they shall be a sweet because the Lord said, I'm going to discover a secret path because you decided to find that you come up with your own standard of beauty. Okay, I got you. I'm going to give you a gift that always keeps on giving. So now, it says, instead of the sweet smell, they shall be a sweet. Because of what? Because of what? Because of what we read in the book of Numbers. Her thigh is going to rock the Lord is saying. You see that thing? That's what, that, that's what we're reading here. Okay, keep going. And instead of a girdle, a rent. Instead of a what? And instead of a girdle, a rent. Now stop right there. Is that instead of a girdle, a rent. Now, what we read, remember it says, instead of a stomacher, a gearing of sex cloth. Because what? He says, I'm going to cause your baby to swell. Now he says, instead of a girdle, a rent. So let's see what that means. A girdle is a bell, right? It says, but this girdle is going to be rent. Then it's going to be what? It's going to be tear, torn apart. Go back to Judith, chapter 9, verse 2. Let's understand what Isaiah said. Judith 9, verse 2 again. Watch this. Judith chapter 9, verse 2. Mm -hmm. O Lord God of my father Simeon, to whom thou gavest a sword to take vengeance of the strangers, mm -hmm. who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her. Stop right there. Who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her. Remember, this haughty woman, remember, don't forget the song. In Isaiah 3, 16, it says, the daughters of Zion are haughty. They have haughty looks, like it says in Surah 26, verse 9. So now what we're reading here, it says, who loosened the girdle of a maid, meaning a young woman, to defile her. So how, when it says loosen the girdle of a maid, that's what, we, that's what Isaiah says. It says, instead of a girdle, a red. Because the girdle is the one that's supposed to what? Hold your skirt. Keep it on, or keep your skirt on your waist, right? It's supposed to keep, it's like it's a bed. So now it says, your girdle is going to be bent. Is going to be loosened. The rent is the loosening part. Who's going to be doing that? The man that you're going to sleep with. That's what he's talking about. The man that you're going to sleep with, guess what they're going to do? The Lord is going to allow those men to do what? To defile you and to abuse your side until it rocks. That's what we're because I think that's what the mindset of the blessing is about. The Lord said, I got something for you. Don't worry. Okay, who loosened the what? Read that part again. Who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her. To defile her. You understand, right? And discovered the thigh to her shame. And discovered the thigh to her shame. Because her thigh was not supposed to be discovered by anyone but her husband. Right? And polluted her virginity to her reproach. You see that? So the defiling part is the pollution. So now her virginity was polluted because of what? Her, her girdle was loose. Somebody loosened her girdle. But now he says, it's going to, instead of a girdle, it's going to be rent. Meaning it's going to be torn. Many men are going to take it away because you're going to be giving it up because you think that's your what? You think that's your secret one more. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 26 verse 10. This is how it's going to be loosened that your thigh is going to what? Be defiled. Watch this. There are 26 verse 10. You see, the most I don't play games. Okay. You see, that's the case. Chapter 26 verse 10. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 10. Read. If thy daughter be shameless, mm -hmm. keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. You know why? Because, guess what? Because she's haughty. You can't tell her nothing. Guess what's going to happen? She's going to abuse herself. You understand? And that abusing process, that's what the Lord says, instead of a, instead of a ghetto, a rent. Because somebody's going to loosen, he's going to what? He's going to loosen the ghetto. Somebody's going to loosen that bell to defile her. That's what he's saying. That's the abusing part. That's the defiling part. That's the pollution he's making that to you. Now jump down to the 12. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. You see that thing? Read. As a thirsty traveler, when he has found a fountain, 
and drink of every water near her. Mm -hmm. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. So now this is a metaphor I get. That she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when she has found a fountain and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open a quiver against every arrow. Meaning what she's going to open her knee against every penis and she is going to be defiled. Her thigh, that's how her thigh is going to run. You understand? That's why it says instead of what? Instead of a gentle a rent, because somebody's gonna loosen that gentle, okay, and defile her. And recover her and, and recover her thigh to a shame, and, and she is going to be polluted. That's where the thinking is gonna come from. That's the judgment. You understand? Because if she's into her look, guess what? It's, it's more than just what's on the outside. Is also what's between the knees. That's what the Lord is teaching us. You understand? I need you to, to, to pay attention here. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Isaiah. Okay? You know what? Hmm. Give me Ezekiel 23, verse 2. Ezekiel. Chapter 23, verse 2. We are still dealing with the mindset of the black queen. This unwittable black queen. Okay? Ezekiel 23, and verse 2. Let's start there. Ezekiel chapter 23 verse 2. Read. The son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. He says there were two women, the daughters of one mother. Go ahead. And they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in Egypt. Guess what? They are in spiritual Egypt right now. Go ahead. They, they committed whoredoms in their youth. They committed whoredoms in their youth. Read. They were there with their breasts pressed. Is it there? Well, they were when they were committing hordom in their youth. Is it there in Egypt where their breasts pressed? Go ahead. And there they bruised the teeth of their virginity. Is it and there while they were committing hordom, while their breasts were being pressed, is that they bruised their teeth in the, of their virginity. Meaning what? Their thighs was being defied. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. Right? And the names of them were Ahola, the elder. Ahola, 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 the elder. Go ahead. And Aholipa, her sister. Mm -hmm. Read. Right? And they were mine. Read. Right? Come on. And they bear sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. That's what their names. Samaria is a holy is a holy is a hola, and Jerusalem a holy power. So now this is a metaphor for Judah and Israel. Okay, come on. Verse five. And Ahola prayed the holids when she was mine. Mm -hmm. And she doted on her on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbor. Is that she doted on her lovers? Meaning what? She lusted after her lovers. Okay, read. Which were clothed with blue captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, mm -hmm. horsemen riding upon horses. Because guess what? Because remember, the war is always hunting for the precious life. That's her mindset. You understand? Read. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, mm -hmm. and with them that were chosen men of Assyria. Ray, come on. And with all and with all on whom she doted. She lasted with, with all their idols, she defiled herself. This is thing, she defiled herself. That's what we read in Sarah. He said she will abuse herself with over much liberty. Now, because the liberty is what? I'm free. You understand? I don't have to submit to no man. I'm free. Nobody, no man can tell me what to do. I'm the boss. That's what they say. You understand? But guess what? And while we are doing this. They are betraying their own self. When they are tired, that's when they say, I'm thinking of sitting down now. Okay, read. Neither left she her hodoms brought from mm -hmm. Egypt. For in her youth, they lay with her. And they bruised the breasts of her virginity and poured their hodom upon her. You see that thing? It says they bruised the what? For they, they bruised and they bruised 
the breast of her virginity. And they bruised the breast of her virginity. Okay, she was just giving it up. Watch this. Jump down to the 15 now. Verse 15. One thing. Good. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And as soon as she saw them with her eyes, she doted upon them and sent messengers unto them into Chaldea. So now into Chaldea. So that's the upper echelon of, of, of ancient Babylon. Okay, watch this. Give me Isaiah 13 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 19. Because remember, she hunts for the precious life because in her mind, that's what the man is looking for. Okay, that's what she thinks. She never sat down to ask what these men are looking for in a wife. She never sat down to ask that. But she, because she self will, she thinks that her thought process is good enough for these men to deal with her. So in her mind, she's going to convince them. But watch this. Isaiah 13 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 19. Great. Right. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, mm -hmm. the beauty of the child, these excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So this says Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child, these excellency. So the child, these were the upper echelons of ancient Babylon back then. Today, the, the upper echelon of the earth is the United States of America. So all their policies, all the the, uh, the, the, the foreign policies and all of that, they are perpetrated throughout the whole earth. You understand? Boredom, lies, selling of people and all of exploitation and oppression. You understand? So guess what? That's what she's looking for. She's hunting for the precious life. Because in her mind, what precious is what's between her knees. Her thigh is precious. That's her mindset. You understand? That her face is precious. She can she that's all she cares about. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 6 verse 24. Proverbs. And guess what? She always has a prize. Her prize is what? How she looks. You see that thing? That's her prize. Watch this. Proverbs 6 verse 24. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 24. Proverbs 6 verse 24. Come on. To keep thee from the evil woman, mm -hmm. from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. So now, King Solomon is giving you the characteristics of this woman. He says, you must keep you away. He says, what? He says, keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Meaning what? She's very good with her tongue. Go ahead. Last not after the after her beauty in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. You see what it says? Remember it says, remember what we read in Isaiah. It says, wanted eyes. Okay? Wanted eyes. The horror of a woman in Jesus is verse 9. It talk about it. It says her eyelids. That's what we're reading. It says, don't let her take you with her eyelids. Okay? Because what did she do? She decked herself. She decked, she decorated her face and all of that. Okay, read verse 25 again. Proverbs 6, verse 25. Read. Right. Bless not after her beauty in thine heart, mm -hmm. neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Don't let her take you with her eyelids because she decked her face, she's got a pretty face, she put makeup on and all of that, but she's a whore on the low. She will destroy you because you are a sin. The only thing that you are thinking about is what? You are thinking about lust. That's all it does run into your mind. And because of that, you're going to miss a lot of stuff. Lot of, the red flag, you're going to miss all of that. Okay, come on. Neither let her take thee with, with her eyelids. Mm -hmm. For by means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. And the ad adulteress will hunt for the precious life. You see that thing? And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Now watch this. Hmm. There's something somewhere I want to go back to. Watch this. Hmm. Hold on a second. You know what? No, no. We are on set. We are on set. We are on set. Okay, read verse 26 again. Proverbs 6, verse 26. Come on. For by means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. 
mm -hmm. and the adulterers will hunt for the precious life. So by means of a holyish woman, remember in verse 24 and 25, King Solomon is telling you the characteristics of the black queen. He's telling you the characteristics of the queen. You understand? It says, by means of a holyish woman, this is a holyish woman. And a whorish woman, remember what we read in Sirachim 6, it says the whoredom of a woman is known in her haughty look and eyes. Meaning every ex her whole existence is based on what she looks on, how she looks on the outside. You understand? So that's why Solomon is telling you this is a whorish woman. And it says what? It says she's going to bring you to a piece of bread. She's going to clean you out. That's what it's saying. It says, and the what and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Because she's got a pride. You understand? Watch this. Give me, let's get some examples. Give me Genesis 38, verse 12. Genesis 38 and verse 12. Let's get some examples. Okay. Because she always has a pride. You know what? Give me Deuteronomy 23, verse 18. Deuteronomy 23, start at the 17, we're going to read 17 and 18 together. Then we're going to go to Genesis 38, verse 12. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Go ahead. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, mm -hmm. nor sodomites of the sons of Israel. You see that thing? There shall be no whore. That's a commandment, right? Go ahead. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore mm -hmm. or the price of a dog. And to enter the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. He says, don't bring the hire of the whore. Because the whore is his hire. She's passing by. That's a whorish woman. She's hunting for the precious life. So if, because she's hunting, she's not going to stay in one place. She keeps moving around. You understand? That's her mindset. Meaning what? That even the, mind, the way her mind thinks, the mind is all, is all over the place. That's the mindset of a holy woman. The mind is all over the place. You understand? Because her mindset is what? She's hunting for the precious life. That's what the Lord is teaching us here. You understand? Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 18. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bring the high over whole. Stop right there. Or the the price. high. Because when something is higher, that means it's not there permanently. It's passing by. After it's used and abused, guess what? Now somebody else will hire it. You see that thing? Right? Or the price of a dog. You see that? Because there's a price on it. Meaning if you come with a bigger, with a bigger base price to be, you'll get it. That's the point. Now, let's get some examples. Genesis 38. Okay. Let's see the hire of a whore and the price of a dog. Let's see the example of that. Okay, Genesis 38 verse 12. Genesis chapter 38 verse 12. Go ahead. And in the process of time, mm -hmm. the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up into unto his sheep shearers to Timnath, he and his friend Hara, the Adulamite. So now Judah, his wife passed. Now he said, Listen, I want to comfort myself. I'm gonna I'm, let me leave here. Let me take my friend and go. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 13. And it was told to Ma, saying, Behold, thy father in law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. He says, Your father in law is going to Timnath to shear his sheep, right? Now Tamar was waiting, guess what? Was waiting for, for Judah's youngest son so that she can she can be married to him. But she had to wait. You understand? Read. And she put her widow's garments off from her and covered her with a veil mm -hmm. and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Shila was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. So now remember, he was told that you need to wait so that Shila can get to a certain age, then you can be married to him. She decided, you know, I don't want to wait. I'm going to take off my widow's garments while I'm, I'm, I'm mourning for my husband. Okay? She took the garments of widow. She took her widow's garment off and put on harlot, the apparel, uh, apparel of a whore. That's what she did. It says she put a veil on. Okay? 
is that she covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timna, because she knew where Judah was going to be. For she saw that Shila was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. We know. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot mm -hmm. because she had covered her face. You, you see that thing? Because prostitutes back then, they need to cover their face so nobody knows that that's a whore. That's how the, the Muslim women be dressed like, be covering their head, looking like ninjas and all that. That's how the whores used to dress up like. Today, they don't have to cover their face no more. They don't have to hide. Shameless today. Okay? But the point is, he, he says, what? Read verse 15 again. Genesis chapter 38 verse 15. Right. When Judas, when Judas saw her, he thought her to be an harlot mm -hmm. because she had covered her face. Because she had covered her face, right? Judas is looking at this woman in his, in his mind, that's a whore right there, right? Go ahead. And he turned unto her by the way and said, mm -hmm. go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. And he said, What wilt thou give me? Oh, and she said, What wilt thou give me? That thou mayest come in unto me. You see what she said? Because she's got a pride. Now she's asking her father-in-law, so listen, what will you give me so that you can sleep with me? That's the question she's asking. Because guess what? That's what we read in, in Deuteronomy 23. It says, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a home or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord. That's what we're reading here. Now you see, she's got a price. So what are you going to pay me? How much are you going to pay me for you to, to deal with me? That's the mindset. You understand? Read. And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Wilt thou give me a pledge till thou send it? You see, she wants some assurances. Because she wants to what? She's going to give it up. Now she's saying, I want some assurances that you're going to pay me what I'm asking. You know what I'm saying? And he said, what pledge shall I give thee? Mm -hmm. And she said, thy signet and thy bracelet and thy staff that is in thine hand. And he gave it her and came in unto her and she conceived by him. You see what I'm saying? But the key is, she said, I want your signet, I want your bracelet, and I want your staff. You see that thing? That's the price. That's the price. So that's the mind thing. So that's why it is the, the, the mind, the horrid woman, she's hunting for the price of life. She always has a price. That means this woman is not loyal. That's the point. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me. Go back to Ezekiel now. 23, verse 17. Ezekiel 23, verse 17. Ezekiel 23, verse 17. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoredom, mm -hmm. and she was polluted with them. And her mind was alienated from them. You see that thing? And her mind was alienated from them because her mind was now on them. That's why it says the Babylonians came, they polluted him. They polluted her side. Like we read in um, like we read in Judah. Okay, come on. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was alienated from her. Mm -hmm. Like as my mind was alien alienated. From her sister. Now that's the Lord speaking now. Says, then my mind was alienated from her, meaning us. Go ahead. In this case, the woman. Read on. Verse, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Yet she multiplied her holdings. Meaning what? She didn't stop. Meaning she doesn't stop doing it. That's the mindset of a holy woman. She don't stop. Go ahead. Yet she multiplied her holdings in calling to remembrance the days of her youth. You see that We're in. Hold on. It says she multiplied her whoredom in calling to remembrance the days of the youth. Meaning in her mind, she still thinks, you ever see these women? It's like they're grannies, yeah. Okay. In their, in their late 20s, 
late 30, late 40, late 50. They still think they are 21 years old. That's why it says when she was multiplying her wardrobe, she remembered what? It says she remembered the days of the Jews. She still thinks she's still young. You see that thing? Ray? Wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. Wherein she played the harlot in the land of Egypt. Keep going. Come on. For she doted upon the Apomeris. Mm -mm. The no, no, read, read, read that right. For she doted upon the Paramos. The Paramos, meaning do what it says. Keep going. Let's just read the whole thing. Whose flesh is as the flesh of asses, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Read the 20 again. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 20. Mm -hmm. For she doted upon the paramours, whose flesh is as the flesh of asses, Read. and whose issue is like the issue of horses. So now what we're reading here, it says, for she doted upon her paramours, meaning her lovers, in calling, oh, 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 whose flesh is as the flesh of asses. Then you talk about what? Their rod. It is their rod is like their rod, their rod of doctrine. Okay? And whose issue is like the issue of horses, meaning what? Their, their sperm. So guess what? Let's bring it to today because that could be a confusion for some, some people. And brother, too. What this is going into is what? Like for instance, give me the right sister give you a Sisters that want to get married one day, Okay, and so forth. Watch this. Practice this. This is what the Lord said. That when you he said you must prove a thing. Okay, watch this. Practice the thing. Ecclesiastes chapter six verse seven. Read. If thou wouldest get a friend, mm -hmm. prove him first. Come on. And be not hasty to credit him. He says you must prove him first. Don't be hasty to, to credit him. So guess what? When you are proving during the proving process. You cannot be looking how big this shoe size is. No, you've got big shoes. You've got big feet. That means so on and so forth. That means, okay, that, that's what you are thinking of that. Listen, that's not, that's not the way to prove a friend. Those are not the, the, that's not the criteria to prove whether this man is going to be, is going to, is going to take care of business as the Lord says. You cannot be looking at the size of his shoes as a way to gauge whether you're going to take care of you or not. Because you have a lustful mindset. You understand? So that's what the Lord is, 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 is explaining here. He says, For she doted upon their paramount, whose flesh is as the flesh of acid. You see that thing? Because that's all you care about. What's between his legs? Watch this. It says, Whose issue is like the issue of water. That's all you care about. You understand? Go back to where was it? Ezekiel 23 verse 21 now. Ezekiel chapter 23 verse 21. Mm -hmm. Thus thou callest to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth mm -hmm. in bruising thy teeth by the Egyptians for the perhaps of thy youth. You see that thing? It says in bruising thy teeth by the Egyptians for the perhaps of thy youth. Because that's what you care about. You care how well you are going to be bruised by the what? By their flesh, who's the flesh is of who's the flesh, the flesh of acid. That's all you care about. That's the mindset of the Holy woman. How how well you are going to be doing. That's all you care about. Guess what? That's not the way to go because that's not going to last. Okay? That's not going to last. That's the mindset of the black priest. That's all they care about. You understand? Watch this. And because of that, this is what happens. Now, let me read the article. I want to read this article now. Hmm. Go back to Isaiah 3, verse 24. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. Remember, we went through all of this to explain what, what we are reading in Isaiah 3, 24. I know some of you forgot. Isaiah 3, 24, read it. So we don't forget where we at. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. Come on. And it shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. That instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink. Read. And instead of a girdle, a rent. Mm -hmm. And instead of well said hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. 
and burning instead of beauty. So now what we're reading is that you're going to have what? You're going to have stink instead of sweet smell. Okay? Instead of a gazel, a rain. Because everybody is going to be what? You're going to be raising your gazel to defile your side. That's the point. And while they are doing that, because of what? Remember, the way you dress, that's how you attack them. That's how you attack the deed to the hand. The way you dress, you understand? But your mindset is that what? You are available for a price. Anybody can, if somebody has a higher price, guess what? You will make yourself available. You understand? And because of that, the way you dress, how you carry yourself, all your mind is only going to be on that type of lifestyle. You're not going to care about your house. You're not going to care about your children. You're not going to care about your husband. You're not going to care about the nation of Israel. Watch this. Now, let's read this article right here, okay? About this, the, about the, it says, instead of the sweet smell, there shall be a stink. That stink is first and foremost caused by the way you dress. Secondly, it's caused by the, it's caused by the people that are going to be what? Loosening your gang. Okay, to defile your side. Watch this. Let's read the article now. Read it. What your skinny jeans are really doing to your vagina. He says, what your skinny jeans are really doing to your vagina. Okay, now. Read that. Those tight pants. Those tight pants look great from the back. Mm -hmm. But do you know what's going on up front? He says, do you know what's going on up front? He says, you could. Because remember what we read in Matthew 23. He says, it looks good on the outside, but on the inside, guess what? You are a walking cop. Watch this. Okay, read, 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 read the paragraph now. There are a lot of things that can go wrong with your vagina. Mm -hmm. From yeast infections to toxic shock syndrome. Problems range from straight up uncomfortable to flat out dangerous if you're not treating, if you're not treating your lady parts with care. You see that thing? Because when it is, is equal to you not treating your lady parts with care. That's what they're saying, right? So naturally, we got a little nervous when we heard that the clothes we wear might be unknowingly wrecking, wreaking havoc down there. You see, I think the clothes you wear can be wreaking havoc down there. Yes, that's biblical. Go ahead. If you search the internet to find out what causes yeast infections or other ailments like bacterial vaginosis, chances are you've stumbled upon the notion that wearing tight pants can cause some issues. No, not it can cause some issues. It will cause issues. Wearing tight pants as a woman will cause issues down there. Go ahead. Does this mean you have to give up your skinny jeans to avoid an obnoxious itch? Yes, you have to. The, you, the sisters must give up those jeans. Go ahead. We ask someone whose job it is to keep vagina, to keep vaginas healthy. Mm -hmm. Read that. Tight pants can definitely irritate the lady bits, but usually the problem only seems like an infection. So the tight pants, they cause an infection. The sort of bacterial vaginosis is caused by these tight pants because it's against the laws of God. That's the point. Go ahead. The biggest problem with tight pants, especially jeans, is that they can rub up against the vulva and cause irritation. Really? Some women have more sensitivity. Tommy Roman, medical sen an OB or gym at UCSF Medical Center, specializing in sexual health concerns, tells self. Really? Tight pants rubbing and putting pressure on the vulva can cause ir irritation. You see that thing? So as you walk, it causes irritation to your vulva. Go ahead. This can lead to symptoms that look very similar to an infection, mm -hmm. like itchiness, 
redness and irritation. Itchiness, redness, and irritation. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay. Deuteronomy 28. It says it's going to cause redness, itchiness, and irritation. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 21. You know what? Read verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 22. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption. The Lord will smite thee with a consumption. Go ahead. And with a fever. Mm -hmm. And with an inflammation. With a what? And with an inflammation. With an inflammation. In pain. Read. And with an extreme burning. With extreme burning. You see that part he says. Uh, is going to cause what? Itchiness, redness, and irritation. That consumption, that inflammation, that extreme pain. That's a curse. That's a judgment right there. You understand? Go back to the article. But what's really happening is that the skin is inflamed. I'll do wait, a biopsy, and when whoa, it comes... Wait, wait, the skin is what? Is that the skin is inflamed. He says the skin is inflamed. Go back to Deuteronomy 21, verse 22 again. He says what's really happening is that your, your vaginal skin is inflamed. Who's doing all of this? The law is doing all of this. Read what you got. Deuteronomy 28, verse 22. Deuteronomy 28, verse 22. Come on. The Lord shall smite thee with the consumption... Mm -hmm. And with the fever, and with an inflammation, right? And with an extreme burning. He says, he says, what consumption, inflammation, and an extreme pain. Read that article again. But what's really happening is that the skin is inflamed. Mm -hmm. You see that thing, inflammation, right? I'll do a biopsy, and when it comes down. To that, something is irritating the skin tissue. Rowan explains, the biopsy shows inflammation that just shouldn't be there. You see that thing? Because by their standards, the inflammation shouldn't be there. But who's putting that inflammation there? The Lord is doing that thing. Right. Some people may mistake the irritation, this irritation for infection, which is why it is important to see your gyno instead of trying to self-treat. Because mm -hmm. when you have to go and see a gynecologist, guess what? That means you have lady problems. You understand? Because the Lord is bringing judgment on you. Right. Chances are slim. Though, chances are slim though, that your skinny genes themselves will cause an overgrowth of yeast or bacteria. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? They are saying all of this to convince the black woman to continue wearing jeans, to continue wearing leggings and back shorts. Right? Theoretically, however, they could be one, they could be one small part of the larger equation. Yeah, breaking of God's laws. Right? You could, in theory, say yes, that tight pants may increase your risk, Rowan says. Right? They decrease breathability. You see that thing? They decrease breathability. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff. Right? Helping trap heat and moisture in your vagina. You see what they do? They trap heat and moisture in your thigh. Go ahead. Which can promote an environment where yeast and bacteria thrive. You see that thing? Go ahead. It makes sense. But what you have on underneath those genes is more important. Mm -hmm. Lie. Go ahead. For women with chronic yeast or bacteria infections, something is clearly disrupting the pH of the vagina. You see that thing? Because the pH level is off is what? It's off balance. Nothing is being the, the biological processes are not happening, are not happening decently and in order because why? You are going against the laws of God because of your haughty look. Ray. So we do look at what kind of detergent they're using 
or or underwear they are wearing. Ray, come on. He says, underwear made of synthetic materials traps moisture, decreasing the airflow in that area. When you pair the two together, it could potentially make a greater impact that either factor itself. Underwear made of wicking materials like polyester is good for very sweaty workouts, but not necessarily everyday use. So now this is trying to find ways to continue to push the thing of what? To push the feminist movement, you understand? That's what he's doing right here. Keep going. So what can you do to keep your vagina happy when you're squeezing into your favorite pants? Mm, come on. If you suffer from irritation, Rowan says it might be worth switching to a skirt. Stop, for stop, a little bit. stop. Hold away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Read that part again. Rowan says what? Rowan says it mm -hmm. may be worth switching to a skirt. You see that thing? It says, Rowan says it may be worth switching to a skirt. If they know what the Bible says. But because they are the devil on them, they're not going to say that. But he says it may be worth switching to a skirt. Meaning what? Put a dress on. So they can be breathability. And then guess what? You're not going to have none of the yeast infections and all of that. Keep going. It may be worth switching to a skirt for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or at least pants that don't cause friction. To see if it helps. All women but especially those prone to irritation or yeast or bacterial infections should wear plain cotton underwear and change it often. You see, come on, read. Once a day should be enough. But if you're having excessive discharge, you should be changing it more frequently or using a panty liner and replacing it and replacing it when it gets near full. You see what, you see what, you see the devil, man. It says you should be changing. It says once a day, should, it says once a day should be enough. But if you are having excessive discharge, so it's letting you know where the discharge is coming from. The discharge is coming from the pants. It says you should be changing it more frequently or using a panty liner and replacing it when it gets near full. So guess what? The, so it's also letting you know the panty liner is not going to stop the discharge. It's not going to stop it. No, when you stop the thinking, you understand? Ray. If you're experiencing recurrent, if you're experiencing recurrent yeast or bacterial infections, mm -hmm. or simply don't know your diagnosis, Ray. see your doctor to figure out the underlying cause. As easy as it is to point fingers when you're uncomfortable and desperate for an explanation, it's probably not your Levi's fault. Guess what? Guess what the fault is? Go back to give me the 2022 verse 5. This is the problem. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You see that thing? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Simple. That's what the Lord is. That's what the most High God says. That's what the sister says to you. So what we're reading on the article, the ego knows what's the cause, but he's not going to admit it because of what? Because of his pride. He's not going to admit that thing. Guess what? Our black queens, their sisters, you understand? Guess what they do? They will hold on to, the, to their genes and say, so it makes me feel comfortable. And not, no, 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 no. It makes you to get attention from men. That's why you have it on and reject the laws of God. That's the point. You understand? That's all. That, that, that's it on that. I don't want to deal with the article no more. Watch this. Go back to Isaiah 3. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. Please repeat, sir. Isaiah 3, 24. Come on. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, then instead of a sweet smell, they shall be stink. And instead of a girdle or rent, and instead of well said hair, boldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. 
So he said, instead of what? Instead of well fed hair, bone. And instead of, and, and bend instead of beauty. So let's deal with that because it says, instead of well fed hair, bone. Jump up to verse 17. Okay? Jump up to verse 17. Remember what the judgment was. What the Lord says he's going to do to the daughters of Zion because of their fortune. Read verse 17 again. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord will smite with the scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. So the Lord says he's going to smite them with a scab on the crown. You understand? That instead of well said head, they're going to have bones on their head. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5. Let's look at the lead now. Because remember, the mind is sick. Okay? The mind is sick. But on top of that mind, this is what they put on. They put a weed now. Because the Lord says, I'm going to take your crown. Now the black woman has to go around going to Indian shop, going to Chinese shop, looking for fake hair. You know, that was made of horse hair, raccoon hair, dead people's hair. Guess what? Today, guess what? They also wear, they, they also make weeds out of people that are dead. Yes, they do that. There was a woman, there's a woman in Kenya that she put on, she bought a weed, she put it on her head, and guess what? There was worms in the, there was, there was eggs in that, in the, in that dead person's head. When she put on, when she put it on her head, those worms went into her skull and they started eating it. All in the name of so-called beauty, right? Okay. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5. Read it. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Why should he be stricken anymore? Come on. He will revolt more and more. Mm -hmm. The whole head is sick. The whole head is sick. The, the head of the black woman is sick. Read. And the whole heart faint. She don't care. She don't give a damn who, who says what. She don't listen to nobody. That's the point. Okay. Now, let's deal with... Let me sh let's play this video now. Okay. Let's play this video. Let me share my screen real quick. One second. This is a sister that used to be on one of the... Uh, one of the sitcoms back in the day, the park, okay? From my uh, can you, brothers, hear the sound? Yes, sir. To front waist wig. Okay. Next thing. Show you guys the video clip now. It's about six minutes, and then I will come back with the rest of my commentary. Even from a tender young age, Countess Vaughn has been a fixture on countless TV favorites such as 227 and Moesha. The latter launched the successful spin-off, The Parkers, making Countess one of the first African-American females to land her very own sitcom. But the beauty and the dream would soon begin to unravel. It's crazy how one day everything's fine and the next thing, the simplest things can, can mess up your life. Working in the industry for so long, I've always had different looks. So I'm used to wearing wigs. In about 2004, my hairstylist introduced me to front lace wigs, and I fell in love with them immediately. You have a full hairline. I was wearing it 24-7. Five years later, the drama came in. The red flag was the oozing from my ears from my forehead, the whole nape around my head, the pus. It had a horrible smell. It was painful. I let this go by for six months. What I didn't realize was I, I, I had a bad reaction to the glue that I used to apply the wig. So my hair started falling out. You see that thing? Now her hair is starting, it started to fall off because of the weed. And the things that they apply to attach the weed to their head, because guess what? I guess they hate their hair. They hate the way they look. They hate their nappy hair. So now they have to put hot hair on their head to look like white women. Now, because of that, look what is happening to her hair. Her hairline is gone now. She's completely bald. Okay? And guess what? She started to have parts started to come out of her scalp. That's what the Lord says. I'm going to smite with the scab, the crown of the hair of the daughter is right.
I didn't want to make the connection with that. I mean, I was just like, come on, a wig, a wig can make you sick? No, no way. I went to a dermatologist, but he didn't let me know long term there would be any problems. Now I have discoloration. People assume, you know, do you have vitiligo? Anywhere where you would apply the wig and put tape on, I'm lighter in those areas. You see that thing? The scab, that's the scab. This is the scab right here. You see that? This is the scab. Go ahead. And Oops. To cover it up, the skin under my eyes peeled because of the glue. The skin. Yo, her skin even started to peel off because of the weed. Skin came off my ears. With the eyeliner, I'm literally drawing in my hairline. Because of the hair situation, I was embarrassed. It was just, you have to be at home and be bald. I, I had to go through this in order to teach my, my, my little one that you got to love yourself before anybody else will. I just wanted to look natural. Please welcome actor. And guess what? You see where she goes after that? She goes to a talk show where Edomites are going to mock her and make a mockery of her. You see this thing? This is some evil stuff right here. You understand? And then you will always find a simp in the mix. There's a simp right there. Okay? There's a simp right there. Countess Vaughn to the show. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, thanks for sharing your story because yeah. I think it, as, as women we all share this hair thing. You know, mm -hmm. they, they try to tell us we're not our hair, but you know, we, we are our hair. Oh, and yes. It, it makes a big difference. What's you see this? This is a black woman. This, this is a black woman. You see what she has on her head? Because this is not a white woman. This is a black woman right here. Okay, that's a weave right there. That's a weave. You would think she's a white woman, by the way. Because I know some of you got fooled. Okay. Style you wear. Mm -hmm. and so pretty much with the lace fronts, wigs, you're applying the glue around... Around the edges, around the nape. Um, glue or tape. Mm -hmm. And what we don't realize is when we're doing this, when you're lifting it up, you're taking off a layer of skin each time, so, and that's what happens. When you say you, t so you you had to take it up to keep reapplying, like yeah, I or I mean, if you if you sweat or, you know, it's just it's time. Yeah. To redo it. To redo it. Right. It's gonna lift. People in general ever say, I've never obviously had a wig. I may need one though. <laughs> <laughs> I may need one. You see that thing? That's a simp. That is a simp. You see what they are doing to his head? They are brushing his head. Yeah. You see that thing? That's a simp right there. That is, that's an example of, oh, little baby boy, little baby, no, 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 no. That's what they are doing to him. He, he doesn't have a beard on his face. She's up. He's a boy in the side of this white woman. You see what she's doing? Before the, during the people. Hmm? But, uh, but, um, but do you ever say like, is this healthy or is this right or are you so excited because it's something so that... excited mm. that's what you go on you know especially being an actress i didn't think about the health risks and i don't think that most of us do think about the health risks yeah. when it comes to trying to look our best exactly and... it was cute and cute now well it and, and it's important because you by coming on this show bravely countess you really are sending this message out to so many people Okay. Okay, that's it on there. So I just wanted to show you, brothers and sisters, what our sisters, the, the things that a queen has to go through. These are the things that they have to go through. You understand? Just to prove a point. While they are proving the point, they are getting destroyed in the process. That's the point. Watch this. Uh, give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 12. Read what you got. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 12. Come on. Seek not death in the error of your life. He says, don't seek 
death in the era of your life. Meaning what? Give me that in Sarah chapter 4 now. Sarah 4, we shall be back. Sarah 4 and verse 25. Mm. Yeah, Sarah 4 verse 25. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 25. Read. In no wise speak against the truth, mm -hmm. but be abashed of the error of thine ignorance. Because it says the subject matter is about somebody speaking against the truth. What is the truth? The laws of God. It says, but be abashed, you mean be ashamed of the error of thy ignorance. So what is the error? It's sin. Because when you are in sin, you will speak against the truth. You see that thing? So go back to Wisdom of Solomon 1 verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 12. Come on. Seek not death in the error of your life. You see that thing? Don't seek death in the error of your life. Why are you in the midst of sin? Don't go up, don't go looking for death. Don't go looking for trouble, the Lord is saying. Read. And pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. That's exactly what you just saw with the sister. When she now her hairline is gone and all of that. Now she's depending on the trees now. She cannot she cannot go natural now. Because guess what? She does not. The hairline is gone, even in the back is gone. Because whenever she would lift up the weed, she said it was lifting up her skin as well. So it was eating her skin as well. That's the scare the Lord is talking about in Isaiah 3 verse 17. Instead of one said hair, baldness. How do you cover the baldness? You put a weed on now. Now you can't leave the house without one. You see that thing? Because guess what? Read verse 12 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Seek not death in the error of your life. Read. And pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. He says, don't pull upon yourself destruction with the work of your hands. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 10. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations. Read. Which have neglected the, the righteous. And forsaken the Lord. So the ungodly are going to say the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imagination. Because she imagined that it's okay for her to put a weed on. She imagined that it's okay that she will put a glue on and put a glue and glue the weed on. She do it continuously. Guess what? Even when she was going through pain, she just ignored the whole thing. She ignored the red flags and all of that. Because what? Vain beauty was in her mind. You see that thing? Read. For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. You see that thing? The now, the sister, hold on, now the sister is miserable. Because of what? Because she decided to go to, she invented, she created her own beauty based on her own imagination. Now it says, it says, whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. Do you think nobody told you about this? They said, listen, these things are not good. I'm sure they did, but he, she just ignored all the advices and the advice and the counsel that she got. She ignored them all. Now the Lord is saying, he says, he is miserable. You're going to have a miserable life. Go ahead. And their, and their hope is vain. Their hope is vain. Come on. Their labors unfruitful. Mm -hmm. And their works unprofitable. You see that thing? Because of that, you're going to be frustrated. Because now, whatever you do is not fruitful, okay? It says your work is unprofitable. Why? Because you despise wisdom and nature. That's the point right there. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 2, 32. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 32. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 32. Mm -hmm. Can a maid forget her ornaments? Or, her, or a bride, her attire. Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. He says, a maid can, can a maid forget her ornament? That's her makeup. She don't for, that's the one thing that they don't forget. They can forget to clean the house. They can forget to make sure that they keep their picture, they keep the kids. But when it comes to the makeup, he says, in front of the mirror, they don't forget that thing. That's what the Lord is saying right here. That's what we read in Matthew 23. If the Lord, that's what we read in 1 Peter 3 verse 3, 1 Timothy 2 verse 9. The prophets, they, they've been addressing the same thing over and over. Guess what? They still don't listen. You understand? They are still not listening. 
Leave the city two again. Jeremiah chapter two, verse 32. Ray. Can a maid forget her ornaments? No. Or a bride? Or a bride her attire? You see that thing, her dress code. She cannot forget to put the, you know, you know, those, those, those her favorite clothes and all of that. She will not forget to do that. Go ahead. A bride. Can a bride forget to put on a wedding dress on the wedding day? Never. Ray. Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. So the Lord says, but we have forgotten him. You understand? Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 22. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 22. He says, but yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Why? Because now the queen, they've gone after other gods to worship them and to serve them, to reject the law. Watch what, read what you got. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 22. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Moreover, this was not enough for them. This was not enough. It's not enough that they're destroying their own selves, not destroying their own selves, and not taking care of the children of the household. It's not enough. This is what they do moreover. Read. Right? That they erred in the knowledge of God. They erred in the knowledge of God. They are in error. Because they are seeking death in the era of their life. Read. Right? But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance. You see, that's the point right there. They are living in the great war of ignorance. The same ignorance is blatant. Right? That's the, that's the word he's saying. Ignorance is blatant. No, ignorance can kill you, according to the scripture. Read. Right? Those so great plagues called they peace. You see that thing? So those plagues. That come to ignorance, they say, according to them, that's peace. Because the world will convince you that's a good idea when it's not. And the world will, will what? The world will support you when you destroy yourself. But when you get yourself together, they will not support you. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Hosea, chapter 9, verse 9. Hosea, chapter 9, and verse 9. Hosea chapter 9, verse 9. Read. Really? They have deeply corrupted themselves. Mm -hmm. As in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will, re he will visit their sins. Because they've deeply corrupted themselves. That's what you are seeing, what we've been watching. They've deeply corrupted themselves. You understand? Because what was the corruption? Walking after other gods. That's the corruption. Because those great walls called a peace. You understand? Watch this. Hmm. Deuteronomy 32, verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29. Oh, that they were wise. Mm -hmm. That they understood this. That they would consider their latter end. Read again. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Because of lack of wisdom, because we get wisdom through application of God's law, is that they understood this. If we had wisdom, we would understand what the Lord is trying to show us. You understand? It says, guess what? It says that they would consider their latter end. What would happen to us in the last days? Because we didn't consider this, because we lacked wisdom, because we rejected God's laws. When the judgment came, we were surprised. Deuteronomy 31, verse 29 now. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 29. Come on. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves. Mm -hmm. And turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. Read. And evil will befall you in the latter days. Come on. Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger to the work of your hands. He says you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke the Lord to anger. You understand? With the work of your hands. Deuteronomy 32, verse 17. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 17. 7 16. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15. No, one thing, one thing. Come on. 
Verse 16. Mm -hmm. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. That's how we provoke the Lord to anger. With abomination. You understand me? They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. Really? To gods whom they knew not. Mm -hmm. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. You see that thing? Because we went after other gods to provoke the Lord to anger. After knowing what we, we were taught, after all the glorious things that the Lord did in front of our eyes, we saw all of that. Guess what we did? We still went back and worshipped other gods. You understand? When you read the book of Kings, you see what Jeroboam did? He introduced two golden calves, one in Dan and one in what? One in Jeshim. You understand? And he says, Behold your God, O Israel. And they believed it. You understand? Because of what? Because of idol worship. It all boils down to that. It boils down to idolatry. You understand? Ezekiel 16 now. No, Jeremiah 16, verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 10. I'm almost done. This is part one. I'm going to deal with part two because I'm not going to go through the whole thing. There's a whole lot of stuff that I have. You know, the videos and all that. I'm not going to touch that. Jeremiah 16, verse 10. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 10. Wait. Right. And it shall come to pass mm -hmm. when thou shalt show this people all, this word, all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? For what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Right. Then shalt thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. You see what the problem is? The problem, the same problem that we're experiencing today is the same problem that we experienced back then. But as a people, we don't learn from our mistakes. We keep repeating the same thing over and over. I'll give an example. In the wilderness, we were rounding the same places for 40 years. Nobody stood and said, wait a minute, we've been here before. I've seen this place before. No, nobody said that. Because we don't learn. You understand? So now the Lord is saying, listen, I'm going to send unto you all my servants and prophets, and they're going to teach you the things that you need to do. Keep my commandments and live. Guess what? We still don't want to listen to that. Read. And ye have done worse than your fathers. Because that's what you see on the, on the, on the YouTube. We've done worse than our fathers. Come on. For behold, ye walk everyone after the, after the imagination of his evil heart, mm -hmm. that they may not hearken unto me. You see that thing? Everyone is walking after their own wicked imagination that they may not hearken unto the voice of the Lord their God. You understand? So now, I'm going to end the class right here. This is part one of the Unweavable Black Queen. This is part one. Part two is coming next hour, Lord's work. Okay? I'm gonna, let's break bread. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Mm -hmm. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.